How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a good day. So today we got a story that, in my opinion, is it's just pretty satisfying. And what I mean by that is I always find it satisfying when someone who really, really has it coming to them gets what, you know, gets what they deserve, basically. So this story comes from one of my friends where basically his cousin acts like a massive jerk for a very long time to him. And then all I can say, because I don't want to spoil it, is uh, karma, man. This is like top 10 karma stories right here bro like when i heard this story i was like i got i gotta put this on the channel immediately and if you don't want bad karma to happen to you uh subscribe to the channel with notifications on if you don't turn on the notifications you won't ever see my videos and uh, i'd really appreciate that and no one wants bad karma so yeah let's just jump right into the story guys so let's call my friend Eric. Obviously, that's not his real name because, you know, I don't like using real names in stories. It just makes things easier. I think you know what I mean. Anyway, so Eric was telling me about basically what happened two summers ago, right? So Eric has a cousin and Eric's cousin's name, let's call him Andrew because I'm trying to think of names I can easily remember. Anyways, right, so Eric uh, has a cousin, his name is Andrew, and Andrew has a lot of money, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, man. Like, money doesn't necessarily make you a bad person, it doesn't make you someone who you don't want to hang out around with. Actually, like, honestly, if you're someone who, like, was very successful and you worked really hard and you got a lot of money because of that, those might actually be traits where I want to hang out with you because, you know, I like hanging out with, you know, hardworking people. However, Eric's cousin was not like that man. Andrew, who is Eric's cousin, was, you know, basically always got everything. You know, his parents didn't really... I'm not going to come for their parenting style, but man, I don't think you can really give your kid everything, even if you can literally give them everything. I think you got to, like, set some boundaries. You got to teach them, like, you know, the value of things. So basically, Eric's cousin Andrew, uh, you know, the TLDR, he got pretty... He was pretty spoiled at that point. And it definitely affected his attitude and the way he treated people and acted, you know, it was just a, it was just kind of bad news, man. So Eric had not seen his cousin Andrew in, you know, about two years at this point. And remember, this is two years ago. So it has been a while since Eric had seen Andrew. And but then one day, Eric's mom came and said, hey, uh, Eric, you're going to be seeing your cousin Andrew for the summer. We're going over to their house in insert location. Uh, you know, we're going to be there for a week. They've been very nice to let us stay over. We're going to have a lot of fun. I know that the last time you saw Andrew, you know, you know he, he wasn't the greatest, but hey, Eric, it's been two years. You, you know, things can change. People can change. And this is a really good opportunity for us because once the next time we're going to be able to go to insert location, you know what I mean? So Eric was not, like, super excited. I mean, he was kind of excited because, like, Insert Location was a cool place. And, you know, he knew that Andrew's house was going to be pretty awesome. Like, he just knew that was going to be a fact. But he was also a little bit concerned about Andrew, obviously, because the last time, just, like, his interactions with him before had been subpar. And he was, like, you know, he, he was open to the fact that he could change, but he was kind of questioning it. But anyways, Andrew was like, okay. Oh, I mean, Eric was like, okay, you know, Mom, that sounds good. We'll go see Andrew and stay, you know, at his house house or whatever that should be fun and yeah so basically a couple weeks later they pack up they drive down so eric and his mom are driving down and they eventually get to andrew's house right and the first thing that they notice is like the driveway because like i don't know about you but like most of the time house driveways are pretty short because like you know it just gets you to the house if there's even a driveway at all right like some houses don't even have a driveway some of them let you, you know there's a driveway to get you in but it doesn't it's not like that long but they knew that, like, this house was going to be, like, mad different when, like, Eric and his mom were driving. They get to the driveway, and it takes them, like, two minutes to get to the main house, bro. Like, they were like, okay, this thing's about to be different. So basically, they drive in, they get to the house, they open it up, and uh, Andrew's mom is like, oh, welcome, Eric's mom. Uh, uh, yeah, Eric's mom and Eric, we're so happy to have you here. Let me, uh, oh, Andrew, come down, come and take their bags. Andrew comes down. Just does not take their bags, man. He's like, hey, guys, how's it going? He's obviously, like, kind of disinterested. Like, he wasn't being, like, that big of a jerk at this time, apparently. But, you know, he was obviously disinterested. He just simply didn't take the bags. Like, Eric had to, you know, take both the bags, even though, like, Andrew's mom was like, oh, Andrew, your guests are here. Let's go take their bags. He w Andrew was like, nah, bro, I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, the first interaction's okay. And then Eric and his mom go up to kind of like their guest floor. 
and they get in and like there's an entire floor dedicated for them that it's looking really nice they're really excited you know honestly eric is like you know what maybe andrew isn't gonna be the greatest but this is gonna be a pretty fun trip like you know we're not gonna spend all the time with them and you know this should be pretty good so basically nothing really happens that night and the next day rolls around and eric and andrew's mom decide that it would be fun for them all to go out and uh you know go to kind of like the boardwalk the boardwalk area um, for them to go, you know, check out some places, check out some, you know, fun locations, whatever. And so they decide to go out and the moms decide to go shopping by themselves. And they say, you know, Eric and Andrew, like, you guys go off, go have some fun. And that's where things start to turn a little sour. So this is when things start to go down a little bit downhill because right off the bat, right, Eric and Andrew, they go and, you know, they just kind of go to this park area and they're kind of just chilling, you know. I, I don't know exactly what they're doing now, but, you know, they're just having a good time. And until, right, a uh, Andrew kind of brings up, like, hey, do you know how much this, do you know how much these shoes go for? <laughs> and that's when Eric was like, oh, boy, this is already going downhill. And just so it's very clear, I'm not going to, I'm not shaming anyone for, like, liking expensive whatever, right? If you like expensive shoes, bro, if that's your thing, or you're really into, I don't know, expensive, like, trading cards, or you're into, like, stamp collecting, you like some expensive, you know, stamps or whatever, some rare stuff, dude, like what you like, like, that's totally chill, but, bro... It's just not like the thing to go out of your way, plus everything that Andrew's gonna do in a second. Just be like, hey, you know how much these shoes are? Like, bro, just like wear the shoes. And if they know, they know, dude. And then Eric was like, uh, okay, that's that's pretty cool. And then Andrew looks at Eric's shoes. And look, bro, Eric's shoes aren't bad. They're like, they function, dude. They've done Eric well, right? So th they're good shoes, right? They function, right? But they're not like, hundreds and hundreds of dollars like Andrew's shoes are, right? So Andrew makes a comment like, how much do your shoes go for, bro? And, and Eric was just like, I don't know, like 50 bucks, like 60 bucks. Like that's not, that's not inexpensive. Like that's, that's, that's pretty expensive. Like that's a pair of shoes. Like, you know, obviously, and, and you know, Eric bought a pair of shoes that would last him. And then Andrew looks at him and just like laughs a little bit and says, okay, let's go. So Eric already kind of knows that, you know, this might be a little bit of a longer trip than he expected, if you know what I mean. So the next day, basically nothing happens after that comment, really, that's noteworthy. But the next day, at some point, I don't know exactly what they're doing, but I know that Eric basically says to Andrew, uh, or, no, sorry, Andrew says to Eric, like, you're welcome for, you know, letting us stay, letting you stay at my house. And Andrew was like, or Eric was like, uh, thanks, I guess, like, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, I'm having a good time, Andrew, like, that's great, he's like, and then Andrew was like, yeah, you know, if I was you, I wouldn't want to be spending any of my vacation time in your house anyways, and then a Eric was like, okay, bro, like, you know, I like my house, he's like, so he basically responds, well, what do you mean by that, and he kind of knew he was opening up Pandora's box by saying this, but, you know, he was starting to get a little bit upset, understandably. If you made it this far into the video, I normally have you guys comment door, but I don't want to always do that because sometimes people will just comment that without watching this far. So I'd like you guys to comment window down below, like the thing you look out of. Uh, so if you see anyone commenting door, they didn't actually make it this far. Don't be mean to them though. They had good intentions, but comment window down below. I'll also be hearting a ton of those comments. So if you want to farm some ha hearts, comment window and yeah, let's get right back into the story. So then on the third day, probably the most egregious event happened so far compared to the last two. And dude, the last two things, the last two comments were not that great. But this third day was probably the worst. So basically what happened was that uh, Andrew, Eric, and their parents got went into a store. And, you know, there's a lot of different items. And the parents kind of went one way and Andrew and Eric went the other way. And Andrew and Eric went to kind of like the shoe section or I think it was the shoe section at least. But basically, there is these, like, shoes that were, you know, they were pretty expensive, right? And a Eric was looking at them, and he's like, hey, these are pretty cool. And then he checked the tag, and he was like, all right, you know, I can't be doing this. Like, like these are way too expensive, right? And then Andrew's like, why don't you just buy them? Eric then has to explain to Andrew that he can't be dropping that much money on, you know, some shoes. And, like, he, he just can't be doing that right. And then what Andrew says next is kind of crazy. What Andrew basically follows up, and he's just like, you know, you'd be able to afford that if you weren't as lazy. And then... Eric is just like, come again? 
Yeah, and then Andrew says to Eric, yeah, if you worked as hard as me, right, you'd be able to afford these, no question. Like, I don't even need to think about the price tag when I'm like, when I'm buying these shoes. The only time I look at the price tag is to know how much I'm dropping so I can tell people. He said, you know, you just got to have the right, you know, grind set mentality. Dude, I don't know if he said that exactly because that would be an, uh, that'd be a total meme, but that was basically what he said. Maybe he didn't say grind set, right? I think I just added that. But basically, the dude was like, if you worked as hard as me, right, you would have it. So, like, Eric was pretty mad because at this point, like, he knew that his friend had not worked, like, a summer job or he wasn't doing anything online to, like, make any money. And that obviously the dude was not working hard. Basically, his parents gave him an allowance, uh... So Eric's basically, uh, Eric realized that Andrew's interpretation of working hard was existing, right? And he got an allowance, dude. And while he was justifiably upset by this comment, Eric just didn't want to, like, you know, get in a fight with Andrew because he realized that, like, you know, he still had a couple more days here and that it would have been super awkward, you know, to get in a fight. Just look. Honestly, this guy was justified to like, you know, to be upset with, uh, you know, Andrew and to like, not obviously physically fight him, but to, you know, to fight back, right? But basically, Eric was like, okay, this guy is obviously living in a different planet. Like, he's not down to earth at all, but I'm just gonna have a good time here. I'm not, I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to make things any bit more difficult. And here's the thing. The next three days go by and it's actually pretty chill. But something pretty big happened during the event I just told you that wasn't as apparent to them at the time. So basically what happened, right, is, you know, the trip is done. Erica's mom pack up their stuff and, you know, they leave and they're, you know, Andrew and his mom were like, thank you guys, so like, thank you for coming. Like, and then they're like, no, thank you for having us. You know, the typical thing you parents say to each other when you know, a guest comes over. And as they're driving back, Eric's mom says, hey, I was talking with Andrew's mom, and uh, apparently he's getting a job this summer. And Eric was a little bit taken aback because he felt like he would have known about this, or maybe he was like, oh, maybe that explains why, you know, Andrew was, you know, being kind of a jerk to me earlier, because maybe he actually is working for it. Doesn't mean he was, he could, you know, he's, he's allowed to be like that much of a jerk, but at the same time, maybe he's kind of justified. And then Eric's mom goes, so basically what happened, because, you know, Eric was a little confused and, you know, she, you know, saw that on his face, so she explained. So basically, Eric's mom goes on to tell Eric that Andrew's mom was, you know, shopping around the store and that, you know, Eric's mom went to the bathroom, so Andrew's mom went to go find the kids, right? And she goes to go find the kids and she's walking up to them and then she kind of stops because she hears a little bit of the conversation that they're having. The conversation I just told you about when Eric was like, oh, I can't afford these shoes. And she hears her son, Andrew, say the whole thing about how, you know, Eric would be able to afford it if he really was working hard like him. And, you know, Andrew's mom was actually really taken aback by that comment. Like, she always knew her son was, like, you know, a little bit, you know, spoiled. Like, she kind of gave him whatever. But she didn't realize it was this bad. So then, Andrew's mom decides to go back. She thinks about it for a little while. And then decides that she's going to make Andrew do a summer job this summer. And that she won't be paying for random stuff he wants anymore. So that he actually understands the true value of money, dude. And let me just say that, you know, my friend Eric told me that on that car ride back, he had never been, like, happier or just been like, okay, justice is served, bro. Car karma is real. Um, and yeah, I don't think Eric has seen, you know, his cousin, you know, since. It's not like a beef thing. They just don't really see each other that often. But I just thought that was kind of a great ending to a you know a pretty tough story anyways guys if you enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel literally just go ahead and watch another one of my videos uh there will be some videos on screen right now and if you don't see them you can always click on my channel and if you want to specifically watch more story times there's probably going to be a story time playlist on screen right now and if you don't see it on screen go into the description of this video and it will be linked down there and just once again thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it leave a like on the video subscribe and yeah peace. how's it going everyone welcome back to the channel today i got a story that my friend told me of basically when he had to go to someone else's house and their little brother had probably one of the craziest spoiled kid mental breakdowns ever 
and it's probably one of the most uncomfortable but also one of like the wildest experiences he's had in a really long time and i just thought to myself i had to tell this on the channel and unless you want to be attacked by a spoiled kid just because you didn't buy them v bucks subscribe to the channel with notifications on and make sure you do turn on the notifications so you won't see my videos otherwise and also for a limited time i'm going to be super generous and give away this awesome prize of if you leave a like in the video i will give you absolutely nothing i know i'm super generous and with that being said, let's just jump right into it. So this story was told to me by my friend Zach. So basically my friend Zach, I'd say about six months ago to about, you know, a little less than a year ago, he went to go see one of his friends that he hadn't seen in a long time, right? So Zach's friend, uh, let's call Zach's friend, I don't know, Ben. Ben's not really super important in the story, but I thought I'd give him a name anyways. So Zach was going to go see his friend, and he hadn't seen his friend in a while, so it was like, you know, a good time to catch up. So, you know, Zach and Ben decide that the best idea would be for Zach to come to Ben's house, and for them to just kind of like hang out for a little bit, maybe stay for dinner, maybe they would eventually go out, you know, I don't know, to the movies or something, maybe they go out for dinner. But also, uh, Zach wanted, they thought it would be a good idea if Zach stayed over for the night so they could hang out, maybe have some people over, I don't know, maybe just have a chill night and play some games, you know, just kind of a good time. Zach also had a little brother though and Zach's little brother was a little bit notorious for really just you know uh, having a, a temper to say the least and the thing was though it had been a while since Zach had seen you know uh, uh, Ben's little brother hold up I think I said Zach's little brother in the beginning no this is Ben's little brother uh, Zach doesn't have a brother he's an only child like me only children rise up we're not weird, I'm telling you. Don't worry about it. No, but back to the story. Anyways, so yeah, so Ben had a little brother, and the thing was, Zach hasn't seen Ben's little brother in a long time. Sorry about my voice dying there for a second, but basically, Zach hadn't seen Ben's little brother in a long time. So while he was always kind of a hothead before, Zach kind of just assumed that, you know, he grew out of it, like, you know, as a lot of kids do, because sometimes kids will be menaces when they're younger, but as they grow up, they just realize that, no one wants to hang out with you, and life is hard if you're not a good person most of the time. Or not just not a good person, but just, just annoying to be around. Most of the time, life will get harder and harder if you're annoying. Also, at this time, Ben's little brother had really gotten to Roblox. Roblox is a pretty popular game, and I also look at the channels that you guys watch as well. YouTube Analytics basically gives me a little feature that shows me channels you guys like, and I'm very happy to see Scrubs on there. It's another big storytime channel that I take a lot of inspiration from, but I also see the occasional Roblox channel or Roblox commentary channel, so I know a lot of you guys also like the game Roblox. I never personally got into it. I tried to play Arsenal a little bit when that was the meta for background gameplay, but more or less, right, I never really got into it, but I can definitely see the appeal. And also, Roblox is a stock, and if you guys don't know, I definitely look into the stock market a lot. It's kind of my thing, and it's just interesting to see Roblox be, you know, valued at multi-billion dollars. Anyways, back to the story, right? So Zach's little, uh, Ben's little brother has really gotten into Roblox, and he's a huge, huge fan if you guys don't know roblox is a game where there's just a lot of game modes it's kind of like a sandbox game and you don't really pay for anything in game that actually helps you to my knowledge but what you do is you buy like skins and items and like just kind of cosmetic items that make you know you look cool or whatever as cool as you can look in like roblox right but anyways it's similar to a lot of other games like that Anyways, so the day rolls around where Zach is going to go see Ben, and, you know, Zach drives over, he gets to Ben's house, he goes there, he hasn't seen Ben in a second, so it, it's, it's like, awkward for a pause, but then they just really just catch on right away. I don't know if you guys have also experienced that, when, you know, you just haven't seen someone in a while, and then all of a sudden it's like, what? It's a little awkward for a second, and then you're like, oh, wait, this is my best friend, of course, right? So anyways, Zach gets there, Ben's there, you know, they, you know, they meet up in the kitchen, whatever, you know, they hug it out, right? And then, you know, Ben's mom is there as well, as well as Ben's little brother, because, you know, they walk into the kitchen. I think, you know, Ben's mom might have been preparing stuff, something for dinner tonight. Zach and Ben decided to stay in since his mom was making something that sounded pretty good. And Ben's little brother was sitting at the kitchen table. So Ben's mom is going on about how, oh, Zach, it's been so long since I've seen you. You look so grown up, like, you know, 
Ben and I talked about you a little bit. Like, we definitely, it's so great that you came, right? And Ben's little brother, right, you know, doesn't really say anything for a little while, as, you know, that kind of just how those interactions go. It's not like Zach and Ben's little brother were, like, best friends. They, you know, they were fine, but you're not really friends with the little brother. In a lot of cases, you know, I'm friends with some little brothers of some friends I have, right? It can't happen. But anyways, right, so as that conversation goes, at one point, it kind of dies down a little bit, and, like, it's as, like, Zach and Ben are starting to walk away to go up to Ben's room, but I don't know, maybe play some games or something, or just chill, and uh, ben, Ben's little brother then, as they're walking away, you know, starts complaining to his mom about how he really wants these Robux, and how it's so, so important for him to get these Robux, and how he's basically, she's depriving him of something from not giving him these Robux, like, the logic is definitely not there, but then again, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't exactly remember how old Ben's real, little brother is, but he's got to be like 12 or 13 or 14 or something. But anyways, he's kind of whining about it, but nothing more than kind of just complaining. And Ben's mom is like, I, I don't want to buy you, or Ben's little brother's mom is like, I don't want to buy you, like, currency. I don't want to pay for a game that's free. That's basically her logic. So anyways, Ben and Zach go upstairs, you know, they hang out, they just kind of like reconnect after a while, and it was honestly just a good time, right? So eventually, dinner time rolls around, and they come downstairs, and they get seated at the table. And then what Ben's mom basically yells up and says, you know, dinner time, right? So then Ben's dad is away, so he doesn't come down, but Ben's little brother is upstairs gaming, playing some Roblox, right? So we, you wait for a second, or Ben waits for a second, Zach and Ben wait for a second, and... Ben's mom as well, and they don't hear anything, right? So then Ben's mom yells up again, saying, hey, it's dinner time, I need you to come down. And then after a moment of silence, you hear this noise of <laughs> Zach was a little confused what that was. He was like, is the radiator going off? Is there a pet that I don't know about that's making this weird grumbling sound? So then he kind of turns his head where the noise was coming from and looks at the top of the stairs and you just see Ben's little brother standing up there, looking all angry, his fists are clenched. Sorry to interrupt the flow of this video a little bit, but if you made it this far into the video, I would like you to comment door down below. Yes, like the thing that you enter a, a building with. Uh, so, real quick, I will occasionally mix up the word I tell you to say, so don't just comment door before you watch it, because sometimes I'll say window or another random word. But yeah, just the people who comment that, I try and heart as many of those as I can so that you guys can get top heart commenter and also so I can say thank you for watching the videos as I really, really do appreciate that. Let's get back to the story. So basically, right, uh, Jax is kind of sitting there like, okay, this is a little bit weird. And then Ben's mom is like, you need to come down. It's dinner time. And Ben's little brother is like, mm, I'm very angry. And at this point, you know, Zach is just like, oh boy, okay. Like, yeah, this kid definitely did not get better than from last time. If anything, he was like, oh wow, he might actually be worse. So essentially what had been happening was after Ben and Zach went upstairs, apparently Ben's little brother continued having the conversation with his mom, and his mom was very firm about, I'm not gonna buy you Robux. Apparently Ben's little brother had ended up storming off and going upstairs. And instead of going upstairs, cooling down, maybe playing some games and relaxing. He'd actually been heating up, doing the opposite of cooling down. He'd just been sitting there steaming, getting angrier and angrier because he apparently he logged into Roblox and saw like some other friends that were online and some of them had some kind of like new hat or some new skin or something that cost in-game currency that his mom was depriving from him, apparently. So when he went up there and saw that, he was already upset, and it just made him madder and madder and madder, and he just got angrier and angrier. And then after, as he was getting angrier and angrier, he was called down for dinner, and that's where we left off. So then what happened next, Zach was just kind of sitting there. He was like, okay, this is a little bit awkward. And then Ben's little brother comes running down the stairs going, ah! and he just starts going around like punching stuff. Uh, obviously, he's not some like boxer or anything. This man isn't Logan Paul or this isn't some like Floyd Mayweather or something. He's not actually going to be like 
landing anything too crazy, right? But he's swinging around at stuff that definitely can't take a punch, even if if it's from someone who's 12 and never boxed in their life, right? He's going around, he's punching the wall. He's like, I want Robux. And Zach is like, oh my God, somehow this kid is worse. How did he get worse? And he was like, Everyone else's mom, my other friend's moms bought them Robux, and I'm sitting here looking like a fool, looking like a clown in my default skin. And then he goes around, he's just punching at stuff and kicking stuff over. Like, he kicked over the table, and there was a lamp on the table, dude, and the lamp cracked. And as he was kind of running around, flailing about, screaming, Ben's mom was just like, this is no way to act like... You're basically saying that, like, he's so spoiled and how he, like, like he should be happy with what he has and that these in-game skins really shouldn't... She didn't really understand it, but she did understand to an extent that, like, it didn't matter for the actual game. But basically, as Ben's little brother was, like, screaming, punching things, and, like, flailing about... He basically was running and trying to, like, he was about to, like, go, like, punch something or whatever. But as he was, like, screaming and running, his leg caught in the tablecloth, right? You know how those, there's, there's, like, really satisfying TikTok videos and, like, YouTube videos of the people who, like, are able to pull a tablecloth and not disturb anything on the table? Well, let me give you a little spoiler. This was not the case with this event. Basically, what happened was Ben's mom had set the entire table before put all the food out, laid everything, just ready for Ben's little brother to come down and for them all to have a nice meal, right? So when Ben's leg gets caught in the tablecloth, he keeps running because he doesn't realize right away, right? And what happens is it yanks and the whole table, all everything, all the food, all the glasses, all the silverware flies off the table, right? The food goes everywhere. I'd say 70% of the dishes are now cracked. All the glasses shatter, this huge bang. And Zach is just sitting there like, oh my God, dude. Oh, at this point, Ben's little brother like freezes as he realizes that his, cause before his rage was like, yeah, he broke a thing or two, right? But his rage really wasn't doing any damage. And then when he notices that he just obliterated the entire dinner table, he just looks at his, he just looks like his face goes pale and he runs upstairs. And let me just say that they did not enjoy, ended up enjoying that nice meal together. In fact, Zach and Ben decided that it would be best if they just went out for dinner, just like went to like, I don't know, McDonald's or something quick after helping his mom clean up. And let me just say that his mom was not very happy at Ben's little brother at all. And she had quite the discussion. Uh, a TLDR, uh, Ben's little brother was banned from playing Roblox for two weeks and also had to like formally apologize to his mom and explain why he knew what he did was wrong, which is totally justifiable or understandable. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and watch another one of my videos. Some of them will be appearing on screen right now, or you can just click my channel as well. The storytime playlist will appear on screen in the top right corner and in the description, so go watch that. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a story time of when this kid basically went crazy and went on a tantrum saying that he claimed that he ruled the world, man. He owns planet Earth. It was something else. And if you want to own planet Earth, all you got to do is subscribe to this channel with notifications on. Yeah, no joke. Uh, yeah, make sure you turn on notifications. You won't see my videos otherwise. And also, if you leave a like on the video, I'll give you nothing, which is pretty generous. And with that being said, let's jump right into the story. So my friend told me the story of when he went to summer camp over two years ago, right? So at the summer camp, right, he didn't know anyone and he's being dropped off and it was an overnight camp. So he was going to be there for two weeks. And right, so he was a little bit nervous as a lot of people are. I know when I was dropped off for my first overnight camp, I actually went with a friend. But at the same time, even then I was pretty nervous because you never really know, like, you know, if it's just going to be a disastrous two weeks where you don't meet anyone, yada, yada, yada. I, most of you guys understand. So while my friend was being driven over by his mom, he was basically expressing his fears. He was like, hey, I don't know if I like, what if I don't like anyone there? What if no one wants to be friends with me? What if like, you know, these next two weeks I'm all alone. I need to go through this all by myself. And his mom basically said that like, 
he's going to have a great time. He shouldn't worry about it. And that like these sleepaway camp type things are really good learning experiences. And that basically, you know, if she went through it as a child. She had the same thing. She was worried about meeting people as well. And it's just important to build character. And let me just say that the people he, or at least one person he was about to meet at this camp that he was going to attend would at least, uh, I think say build character is definitely a way to put it. Once you've experienced with this person, you will have a lot of character. In fact, you'll have enough character to pass around, probably. Give some to me, a little character to everyone who watches this video, I don't know. So he's in the car with his mom, and eventually they pull up. And as he's pulling up, you know, he's looking out, and he sees all these other cars, and he sees big swarms of kids and their parents, and then he sees all these people starting to, like, line up to go into this building. So when his mom and him get out of the car, they kind of look around, and they see the building and the line, so they decide to hop into it. And the thing is, like, he also, he, my friend looks around, and he's kind of looking at all the people, and there's no, like, really big groups of people. It really just looks like a bunch of kids and their parents kind of individually by themselves, which was kind of a relief because he was a afraid that, you know, all these kids came with friends and we're just going to stick with those friends. And he was the only person who went to the sleepaway camp that, you know, didn't have any friends that he came with. And he was afraid like these were going to be the worst two weeks of his life. So he was already feeling a little bit better. I mean, things kind of go downhill in a sense. Uh, so this was kind of some false hope in a way. Right, so he gets in line, and after waiting in line for a while, he eventually gets to this table. It's basically like the check-in table, right? So what happens there is he goes up to the table, he, he and his mom go up, they say, hey, how's it going? So excited to have you, etc. You know how they do in sleepaway camps. But anyways, right, so he goes up, he checks in, you know, and they say, all right, well, you're in group B. So group B is going to meet over there in about 10 minutes, and this is the time when you say goodbye to your mom. I don't know about you guys, but this was always the part that got me at these things. But anyways, he says bye to his mom. His mom says, you're going to have a great time. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, I'm looking around and I see so many other kids in the exact same situation as you. Don't worry about it. You're going to be just fine. So, right. So my friend is waiting there and his mom leaves. And he's like, okay, here we go into the storm, right? So he's kind of the first one in his group there. So he's waiting there. And then eventually he sees another kid and his mom, and they, the guy at the desk, points to where he is, which is where Group B is meeting, and I, he sees the kid, you know, hug his mom goodbye, and the kid comes over, and this guy seems pretty normal, you know, he's having a few conversations, you know, he's talking about like, oh, why did you sign up for this camp, like, where do you live, what do you do in your free time, and this guy seems pretty normal, so my friend was, you know, feeling pretty good, because he already met one guy who's like, kind of chill, so, you know, he's like, okay, this is actually going to be a pretty decent experience. Or so he thought, right? So him and the, this, so my friend and this guy were kind of just there. They're chilling. They're talking. You know, just getting to know each other. When he, uh, my friend notices another guy at the stand. So this other guy came with his mom, right? And, you know, he kind of had a bit of an essence to him, like a bit of an aura. I don't really know how to say it, but kind of the way, like, he was, like, I don't know, carrying himself, the way it looked like he was speaking. Like, they hadn't even interacted with him. This guy hadn't even said a thing to my friend, but my friend just automatically got a bad feeling. Obviously, he was very open because he was like, okay, I have a bad feeling, so what? Like, my, my gut reaction could be wrong. All I'm going to say, guys, is, like, if if you have a gut reaction about something, it's not always going to be right, but don't automatically, you know, don't automatically say it's false because we have a lot of instincts that, you know, we've developed over thousands of years that just sometimes it's hard to explain, but sometimes you do just got to trust that. And in this case, my friend was very much right. So the kid comes over after saying goodbye to his mom and he's just kind of like, what's up? He's like, sup? And like, really is just not interacting with them. And at first, my friend, like, initially, he was like, okay, this kid obviously, like, is shy and he's nervous. Like, he's like, kind of like, okay, dude, I've been there too. So he's like, okay, you know what? I'll actually, <coughs> I'll kind of like, you know, go above and beyond and try and hang out with this guy, do some activities, because uh, he's obviously having a hard time. And this is kind of where I thought I was going to be. So it's kind of the right thing to just, you know, go ahead and just like hang out with this guy, you know, he, and he could be pretty chill, you know? Turns out he should have listened to his gut. So eventually some more kids come over to the group B section where my friend and the other guys were. And then after a little while, a counselor came over and was like, okay, this is everyone. I hope you guys had a little time to meet each other. And then he's like, okay, guys, so we're going to be heading back to the cabin for tonight and uh, I'll show you guys your place. 
and we'll be getting dinner soon. But in the meantime, let's get you grab your stuff and we'll be heading over. So they head over to the cabin. There's a little bit more small talk that's happening. But basically, right, they head over. And the cabin, man, it's not a bad cabin for, like, wilderness camps. But it's not obviously, you know, the Four Seasons luxury hotel accommodations, man. It's a cabin in a wilderness camp. It's gonna be a little crappy. It is what it is, bro. And the thing is, this kid, basically the spoiled kid that, like, everyone got, that my friend got a bad feeling about, uh, right away off the bat started complaining, bro. They were walking up to the place and he was like, I don't see an air conditioning unit. Where's the air conditioning unit? It's so hot outside. I've never slept without an air conditioning unit. And at first my friend was like, okay, dude, it's like a wilderness camp, but like whatever, I'll be nice to the guy. And, and he's like, you know, it's okay. It, the night should be pretty cool. And the guy was like, fine, I guess. So once they get into the cabin, there's a bunch of like bunk beds where there's a top bunk and a bottom bunk and the kids kind of separate and split up. And so my friend and the spoiled kid, who he didn't really know is the spoiled kid, but we're just gonna call him the spoiled kid, they basically went together and, or at least my friend walked with them as he wanted to be like a buddy to this guy. Little did he know the mistake he was making. And my friend really wanted top bunk because it's just something he really prefers. So he said, hey, if you don't mind, I'm gonna try and take top bunk. But the spoiled kid said, no, I'm taking top bunk. And the thing is, if you really want a top bunk, you could be like, hey man, like how much do you really want it? Because like, that's my preference. He says like, it's like, we can totally figure it out. But the kid was like, no, that's my bunk and jumps up on the top bunk. Like he climbs all the way up and gets in the bed to prevent my friend from going in. And my friend is like, Okay. Sorry to interrupt this video, but if you made it this far, comment door down below. Yes, D-O-O-R, like, you know, something that you enter a building with. I just like to see who makes it this far into the video, but don't always just comment door right away because I do change it up every once in a while, and most likely next video it won't be door. Anyways, guys, let's get back to the story. So anyways, at dinner that night, they all walk over, and at this point, my friend is, like, not a super big fan of the spoiled kid, but, like, he's not totally given up on him yet until dinner time, which he does, right? So they get to dinner, and it's kind of a, uh, it's the type where, like, you sit at a table with your group, so play, so, uh, group B is all sitting together, they're also in the same cabin, so they all, they kind of do stuff together, right? And the way that the dinner is served, it is, like, there is a big bowl of the meal, and then it's like supposed to be passed around and people can kind of take portions that are, you know, basically the size of what you want. So the meal's getting passed around and the last two people to receive the meal are my friend and the spoiled kid. So there's about enough for both of them when it gets around to the spoiled kid and they're the last two to have it. So my friend was kind of just expecting the kid to kind of like take the, you know, the food, just split in half, because it was, like, a decent proportion for, like, a meal, right? But what the spoiled kid does instead is he scoops the entire thing onto his plate and hands my friend the empty dish. At this point, my friend's like, hey, bro, like, can I have some of that? And the kid's like, no, that's unfortunate. Like, you shouldn't have been last. At this point, my friend is starting to get a little bit mad. And, like, the other people, like, the counselor was, like, not paying attention. But there were some other kids in Group B that were starting to notice this guy's behavior. So this behavior continues throughout the first week. There's a lot of little examples, but I don't want this video to go on way too long, as it could go, as there were a lot of examples. So after the first week, there was a whole other week these guys were going to have to stay together. And basically, these kids in, in, in Group B basically had enough of the spoiled kid. So, but the thing was, this kid never really acted that, you know, spoiled or that bratty when, you know, camp counselors were around, as he definitely would have been, like, reprimanded, right? So their plan was to kind of, like, set it up so that, like, when one of the camp counselors somehow to get him in trouble, right? They wanted the camp counselors to kind of catch him in the action. So basically what their plan was, was they were going to basically talk to this kid and assume that he would have done something kind of like bratty as he had been consistently doing. But also they would have, one of them would have gone out and said, hey, camp counselor, can you come in? I want to show you something is something I've been working on. And basically they would have some kind of like little project thing to show them like if the plan didn't work. So it wasn't super obvious. But basically what the conversation they were having, every, all the kids in group B and the spoiled kid were having a conversation about the activities they were having that night. So that night they were basically going to cook up some s'mores and the spoiled kid started going on about saying how he should have half the s'mores because, you know, he deserves it because of like, 
he was he's just like he's just better than all of them and he's really going off at this point because he had just been escalating throughout the week to the point where they really just needed like someone to hear this they just needed one of the counselors to come in and put an end to this basically so one of the friends while the other friends are talking to the spoiled kid making him kind of go off on a tangent about how he's better than everyone and how he deserves everything right the other kid is saying oh can you come over here we want to show you something and as so the count the counselor is coming over with the other kid and the other kids are talking to the spoiled kid as well as my friend right to get him to keep talking and then the counselor comes up to the door and he's starting to hear what the spoiled kid is saying and then he stops in his tracks to listen to the rest of the conversation and the spoiled kid basically goes on to say something along the lines of i deserved the majority of the marshmallows tonight because i am just better than all of you when the camp counselor hears that he kind of just, it clicks and he goes into the room and he's like, what did you just say? And probably the craziest thing is this spoiled kid probably had never been reprimanded in his life because he goes on to tell the counselor exactly what he told the other guys. Basically that tonight he should have a larger percentage of the marshmallows because he is just better than them and he should be reported re rewarded accordingly. The counselor looks obviously dumbfounded and all the other guys are just like, oh my God, he completely fell into our trap. Like we can't believe he actually said that in front of the counselor like we really thought we had to get him to you know catch him in the act but bro if we asked he would have said that's crazy so basically what ended up happening was the camp counselor you know basically told the kid yeah you're just not even go tonight you're not even going to the sport to the marshmallow event and then he starts having a meltdown in front of everyone so basically when the kid is told by the counselor that he can't get any marshmallows tonight because of what he said, he goes on this like, he starts screaming, he starts throwing stuff, he starts kicking over things to the point where he actually kicks one of the bunk beds and for some reason he gets it at just the right angle that he cracks one of the beams. Maybe it wasn't the best thing structurally. He goes in, he then he like bumps stuff around. He bumps actually, he bumps over the lamp in one of the corners and it falls and it hits the window and breaks the window pane. This guy has basically gone around just doing all this damage just because he was told that he can't have any marshmallows after he told the counselor point blank that he should have more because he is just better because he is better. At this point, the camp counselor is like, come with me. And they take him away. And my friend and his friends were just like, oh my God, like we did not expect him to go on a full on rampage. We just wanted him to be, you know, we just wanted someone to tell him what's up, right? We didn't expect this whole thing to happen, right? So basically they go on with their day and they have marshmallows and the spoiled kid doesn't come back for that. And they go back to bed and they're waiting for, you know, at the cabin for when they get back to the cabin to see the spoiled kid there. They don't, they do see the counselor though. So they say, hey, like, what ended up happening and the counselor explains to them that after the whole rampage and all the damage that the spoiled kid caused they called his parents and explained what happened and demanded that they pick him up that night yeah so basically for the rest of the week my friend was free of the spoiled kid uh because he got picked up that night and honestly the rest of like his friends in the the group b cabin he actually became kind of close with because they bonded over how much they disliked this one kid moral of the story don't be a jerk guys anyways guys if you enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel go ahead and watch another one of my videos some videos will appear on screen right now or you can always click on my channel i also suggest that you do watch the story time playlist which will be in the description it'll appear in the top right corner and it might appear on screen so go ahead and watch some of my old videos i appreciate you guys so much for watching watching and i'll see you in the next How's one going, Peace. everyone welcome back to the channel today i have a subscriber story about the spoiled rich kid who is basically being a brat the whole time and at one point he even said and i quote poor people are garbage thankfully this kid gets what's coming to him and the ending is pretty good and when i saw the story i just thought i had to tell it on the channel if you enjoy story time videos consider subscribing to the channel with notifications on if you don't turn on those notifications you will not see the videos and also leave a like on the video right now and you will receive absolutely nothing just because i'm feeling extra special generous today and with that being said let's get right into the story so this story takes place during thanksgiving of this year the subscriber has an 
extended family in which every Thanksgiving he goes and visits. And, you know, he drives down a couple hours to the location that he goes to. And it's him and all of his family members all meet up for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is an interesting holiday because, like, if you don't like your family, you are forced to go see them. Thankfully, I like my family. We get along quite well. And it's always a good time to see them. But there's a lot of times where, you know, family are the friends that you're forced to have. So sometimes you guys just don't mix well. It is what it is. But, you know, this subscriber really likes everyone in his family, except there's this one cousin he has, which he cannot stand. This subscriber was, you know, pretty middle class. He just was like kind of like normal guy, right? And the rest of his family was kind of in the same situation, except he had this one cousin who came from a very, very, very rich family. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that at all. In fact, it's, it's totally fine, right? It's more the attitude and the way you go about it, right? And this cousin was a, had a terrible attitude. And the thing is, I saw a comment on a video I made about another situation or another story that was kind of similar where someone was just kind of being bratty because they had money. And someone said it really is the parents' fault. And the thing is, I will kind of have to agree. This kid was like, 9, 10 or something, and at that age, you know, it's 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 still a little bit on the kid because, like, they're doing it and they are at least aware of what they're doing, but at the same time, a lot of it is coming from, you know, how you're raised if your parents didn't enforce rules around this stuff. But anyways, right, so there's this cousin that the subscriber hates, and he was really hoping that the subscribe that the cousin would, I don't know, go to, like, some fancy trip in Spain or something for Thanksgiving instead. He was really hoping he would like get lucky and they'd be like, oh no, we're going to, we're going to Norway to like, I, I don't even know, man, we can't come. But nope, they had no plans. And the mom of the cousin was like, oh, we're so excited to see you guys. And the subscriber was like, uh -huh, okay. Anyway, so he's driving down and he's talking to his mom a little bit, or the subscriber is driving down to be clear. So the subscriber talks to his mom and he's kind of like explaining why he's like a little bit bummed out to go. And his mom's like, yeah, you know, uh, your cousin does not have the right manners. He doesn't really know. He's not, he definitely needs like, his mom really needs to step up the game. But the thing is, we need to see the rest of your family, right? We're only able to do this, you know, once a year to get everyone together. And don't you like the rest of your family? And the subscriber was like, yeah, you know, I do really like the rest of my family. And I should just suck it up because, you know, this guy, how bad can my cousin be, man? How bad can my, can, can my cousin be? And uh, let me just say, uh, he underestimated how bad his cousin could be, bro. So let's give the cousin a name. Let's call the cousin Jimmy. Yeah, the cousin's name's gonna be Jimmy for the sake of this video. Obviously, his name is not actually Jimmy. I actually didn't even get the name. So there's like a small chance that it actually is Jimmy, but it's it's not Jimmy. That's the fake name we'll use for the cousin. Anyway, so the subscriber eventually gets to the house of his, I think it was like his aunt or some family member that kind of hosts this whole thing. And he gets there and Jimmy is not there. His cousin Jimmy is not there. But basically every other family member is there, right? So he's actually having, the subscribers having a really good time just, you know, interacting with his, you know, his family, just like catching up. He hasn't seen them in over a year since the last time he's seen them all in one place was, you know, last Thanksgiving. But normally he'll see some of them more often, but this year was just kind of crazy and he didn't see any of them during the whole year. But then they hear a car pull up outside and... The subscriber is just like, okay, this this is Jimmy. So, he, you know, he kind of like gets up and he peeks out the window and outside is just like super nice car. He's like, yep, okay, there's no shot this isn't Jimmy at this point. Um, so, you know, they're waiting at the door and they hear, you know, they hear the doorbell ring and, you know, the dogs are barking and the dude's like, okay, it's only a matter of time. Like, he's here. Just get over yourself, bro. So subscriber's like, dude, you just got to get through this one night and also just, just hang, just don't hang out with them, man. Like, it's not that hard. Literally hang out with everyone else. The problem was like, he was like the age of the subscriber. Oh, no, the subscriber was the age of like uh, Jimmy, the cousin, and they were kind of younger than everyone else there. There was a lot of like older relatives and then there were some kids, but the kids were like 18, 19. They were like, I don't know, like 11, 10. So he was kind of he, he was kind of bound to be hanging out with the cousin, but he was really hoping he'd get lucky and just be able to hang out with the older kids and then also, you know, the parents or whatever. But yeah, anyway, so Jimmy walks in and his mom, his mom's like, oh, hi, everyone. Oh, man, I, I missed you guys so much. It's so good to see you. You know how it goes. So they kind of go around saying hi to everyone. And then eventually Jimmy 
goes around saying hi to the, hi to the subscriber. And he kind of just looks at him, and he's like, hi. And, you know, at first, the, the subscriber was like, oh, maybe he's just kind of shy. But he kind of felt like he was being snubbed a little bit because Jimmy was kind of gave him a look. Like, no enthusiasm, no care in the world. It was just like, hi there, cousin I'm forced to be with. The whole family kind of, like, gathers around besides some people in the kitchen that are kind of, like, finishing up the Thanksgiving meal, getting it ready. And the meal would probably be ready in, like, an hour or so. So the whole family decided to kind of gather together and just kind of, like, talk amongst each other, you know, just kind of, like, be there. Um... So Jimmy and the subscriber are kind of near each other, and the subscriber's like, okay, fine, I'll talk to Jimmy. So it's Jimmy and him, and he was kind of hoping that another person would come over to talk, like, with them, but it just ended up being those two. So the subscriber's like, hi, Jimmy, right? The subscriber wasn't, like, he admitted that he wasn't being, like, super enthusiastic, but he was at least, like, he was putting in some effort. He's like, hey, Jimmy, like, how's school going? And Jimmy's like, I don't even have to go to school. Because I don't even have to get a job. Like, dude went right on, he went, he started right away on his, on his, on his tangent, bro. On his, like, just his attitude. Not even a second out of the bat, he's already like, I don't need to go to school. I don't need to get a job when I'm older. Like, all right, I'll have plenty of money. And the subscriber's like, oh boy, this is about it. This is about to be a long Thanksgiving, bro. I'm going to interrupt this video just for a second and ask you guys to comment eggnog down below. That's E-G-G-N-O-G. -G -G. That's like a festive drink a lot of people drink at Christmas time. If you don't know, uh, like about midway or close to the end of my videos, I have people comment something to see who actually makes it to the end, as I really do appreciate people who watch my videos all the way. And yeah, uh, we're commenting eggnog today. And also, if you want a lot of hearts from me and you want to farm like top commenter or most hearts on the channel, I'm trying to heart as many comments that this comment eggnog down below. So yeah, anyways, back to the story. So the subscriber kind of responds to Jimmy. And just to recap, the subscriber just asked Jimmy like, oh, how's school going? And Jimmy said, oh, I hate it. It's so stupid. Like, why am I even going? Because I don't even need to work when I'm out of college, right? Um, or out of school, maybe he doesn't even want to go to college. And so the subscriber is kind of like, you know, he's not very happy, but he's not going to be super confrontational about this. While it makes sense, because, you know, you don't want to start something on Christmas, the fact that, like, uh, the subscriber wasn't confrontational throughout the next, like, bit of the story, he said in the DM that he sent me when, because you can submit stories to my Instagram, it's in the description. He basically said that he probably was, like, the fact that he didn't, like, push back more against Jimmy was probably one of the reasons why the story went as bad as it did later on. But anyways, back to the story. So then Jimmy wasn't like, uh, the subscriber wasn't too happy at Jimmy for what he said, but obviously he doesn't want to start something. But he kind of said like in response, he's like, oh, like, I mean, I want to, I'm, do I'm doing pretty well in school. Like I kind of have to, because like, I'm really trying to get to a decent college so that I can go and, you know, get a, a you know, a, a, a comm sci degree from a decent college. Cause like, He's like, yeah, I want to, you know, I got to like think about money in the future. Kind of like in response to like what Jimmy said. And it was supposed to be kind of like a, supposed to be kind of like a little response saying like, like, hey man, like I actually got to work and you don't. And like kind of as like a negative thing. But Jimmy was like, yeah, man, that must suck for you. Like he didn't understand that like the subscriber was trying to say that as like a negative thing towards Jimmy. And Jimmy's like, huh, tough L, lol. Which, I mean, this was all pretty impressive for them being, like, 10 or whatever. And uh, to be fair, the subscriber, like, I, I'm going to make the assumption that he, like, saw one of those, like, YouTube videos of, like, best careers. And honestly, I have a lot of friends now that are in college that are getting comp sci degrees because they know it's a good major. So, like, shout out to the subscriber, bro. Like, honestly, shout out to the subscriber for knowing what he's doing so early on. Anyways, Jimmy is like, oh, you probably have to work a summer job too. And at this point, the subscriber had not, but he honestly had been thinking about it because there had been some games they'd been wanting to play. But his mom was like, you know, those are too expensive or I'm not going to buy them for you. And if you want to get them, you're going to have to do it with your own money and, you know, maybe mow some lawns or something like that. I think the subscriber is too young to like actually get like a real job, but he'd like go around, I don't know if like a paper route still a thing or maybe mowing some lawns or just the stuff you do when you're too young for like an actual part-time job. So he was getting, a, he was a little upset by the fact that like Jimmy was dunking on him for like trying to, you know, trying to get his hustle on, trying to grind, right? So, but he doesn't respond with anything that negative. He's just like, yeah, probably. 
And then he kind of ends the conversation. The subscriber's like, I, I can't do this anymore. So he's like, hey, Jimmy, nice to talk to you. I, I got to go to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom, and then he comes back and sits somewhere else during the conversation, which honestly, bro, that's pretty smart. So eventually, it is dinner time, and that's probably one of the best parts of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I like seeing my family, but bro, that like that pumpkin pie, man, that's something else. That's all I'm going to say. But anyways, right, so it's dinner time, and, you know, the turkey's being passed around and cut or whatever. And Jimmy's like, to his mom, he kind of like looks over to his mom. He's like, I can take a bigger piece, right? Because I'm rich. And no one really hears this, but the subscriber hears this and just rolls his eyes. He's like, oh my God, Jimmy's actually the worst. Mom responds like, oh, Jimmy, of course you can take a bigger piece, but that's not a reason why you can take a bigger piece. Completely like ignoring how bad what her son just said was and kind of just saying like, oh, a little slap on the wrist for what he said, but being like, yeah, of course you can get a bigger piece, right? So Jimmy says, or the subscriber's like, bro, you cannot be serious, man. So at the dinner table, right, there, you know, they've passed around the food, passed around the turkey, you know, things are good, people are digging in, but they're also talking with each other. And for some reason, right, the car, the, the car ride up for Jimmy uh, kind of like comes up in conversation. His mom was like, oh, yeah, it was such a like a tough ride down here. Like it took a long time. We we're in a lot of traffic. We had to go through some cities. And then Jimmy decides to pipe up, which this is the beginning of the end, bro. So Jimmy decides to pipe up, which is, you know, as I said earlier, just like a bad idea. So what he starts going on is he's like, yeah, the car ride took so long and we had to go through this neighborhood and the houses were so small. I don't know how anyone could live in a house like that. There weren't even like there, the, there wasn't a garage with like three cars in it which is absolutely crazy. I don't know how anyone even lives like that. And at one point, the traffic got so bad that my mom was like, maybe next time we should take public transportation, like the train. Then Jimmy goes on to say, and then I said to my mom, poor people are garbage and I don't want to be around them because I'll catch a disease. And then he kind of makes this look around, kind of like looking for validation after what he just said because he thought it was like, super funny and true and like everyone would be like oh that's so funny and true jimmy like wow you're a comedian like you're actually so funny and true and everyone's just like looking at him just like blank face this like come again i i, I did checking their ears like oh i must i must have like i must have like gotten something wrong here man so the subscriber's sitting there and honestly he's trying to hold back laughter because he knows that jimmy just messed up and then he looks at jimmy's mom whose face is just blank just completely blank but you could see that she like, it looks like like she just swallowed a rock, bro. Like her face was blank, but you could look at her eyes. And all of a sudden you see that Jimmy stands up, but he didn't stand up on his own accord. His mom yanked him up and literally just walked him out of the house. Literally just pulled him by like the shirt. And Jimmy's like, mom, what is that? Right. You walked him out of the house. And then like the dinner table was so silent. And they just wait like a minute and then they hear a car edge and go and they hear a car leave. And the subscriber's like, no way, no way, dude, this isn't real. He runs out to look out the window. Jimmy's car's gone. And he comes back to the table and he's just like, what just happened? And nothing really happened after that besides the subscriber and his family had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, that was quite an ending. So I thought I had to tell that in the story. What did I just say? I just said I have to tell that on the story. I had to tell that story on the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, if you really want to support the channel, uh, just go ahead and watch another one of my story videos. There might be one in the sidebar recommended, or there might be some on screen right now. But, you know, you can also watch the Storytime playlist, which holds all the stories. It's first link in the, in the description. It probably popped up on screen. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you next week. How's case. it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a subscriber story of when the spoiled spratty girl basically got absolutely wrecked by the Minecraft kid. I don't want to spoil exactly how she got wrecked, but let me just say that... It was pretty incredible, enough that I thought I'd have to tell the story. And uh, she was definitely brought down to earth. Someone definitely popped her super, super inflated ego, and it was pretty hilarious. If you enjoy story videos, make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications on. Also, leave a like on the video because you'll get literally nothing if you do that, which is a pretty epic deal. With that being said, let's jump into the story. So this story was sent in by a subscriber. You can send in your own stories to my Instagram. It will be in the description. But anyways, right, the subscriber, he's in this class and he is in seventh grade. In this class, there's this one kind of group of girls, which are like the popular group. But there's this one girl who's kind of like the alpha of the pack. I know that sounds a little 
little weird. But you know how sometimes there's like a group of popular people and one of them is like obviously the dominant ones and the other ones are kind of like the followers. It's pretty stereotypical in a lot of like movies and TV shows to have that and it actually was like this in his class. Anyways, let's give this girl a name. We're just going to call this girl Erin because uh, I watched The Office recently and that was a name that's in The Office. Anyways, right? So Erin is kind of like the top dog of like her pack of popular people. And the thing is, these girls are like popular, but they're the popular type that like, for some reason that they're kind of known as popular, even though a lot of people really don't like them because they've kind of garnered a reputation of not being, you know, great people. Uh, like basically this group of girls will like snub other people. They'll kind of like make comments. They'll like spread drama, kind of like all the like the nasty stuff that's like portrayed in movies of like popular high school cliques and stuff. It was basically that, but in real life. Uh, but yeah, so most people didn't like them and they didn't dislike them for like no good reason. Aaron and her clique were definitely like not, not, not good people. I mean, maybe they were fine people, but they were caught up in the drama of like being the popular seventh grader. Honestly, I bet they'll look back one day and be like, wow, that was so stupid. There's also a kid in this class kind of known as the Minecraft kid. I'm not going to bother giving him a name. I'm literally just going to call him the Minecraft kid for the duration of this video. Uh, this Minecraft kid was known as the Minecraft kid because he would literally start playing, he would play Minecraft, like, in class. Like, he would have his computer out, he'd have his mouse out, and he found kind of a spot in the room, and he also was playing, like, game modes that didn't need a ton of clicking, right? So he could actually get away with it to play it during class. But everyone kind of, at least in the back of the room, and then it's kind of spread as, like, common knowledge, the front of the room, people kind of knew that he was doing it. So he was kind of known as the Minecraft kid. He was also, like, not, like, super cool in that type of sense. Like, I'm, he was a decent guy, and everyone, like, had good interactions with him. But he was kind of, like, he was a little nerdy. He was a little sweaty, right? It is what it is. No offense to liking Minecraft. I mean, obviously, like that's the gameplay I use in all my videos. I obviously enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot when I was like in fifth, sixth grade, and I enjoyed a lot now. But he was kind of known as that, and he wasn't like Aaron and her group of girls weren't the he wasn't the guy that they were necessarily going after, which maybe he's gonna be some like you know, insanely wealthy crypto hedge fund quant guy because of all of his time on the computer, but he isn't that now, so that's why they didn't want him. Aaron and her friends were more into the whole, like, Brad and Chad type guys, kind of like the top two dudes on the school's football team. Uh, one of them was in their grade, another one was in the eighth grade, but that's irrelevant. They're not even part of the story, really. I just got that little bit of detail. I thought I'd add it. Anyways, right, so Aaron and her girls one day are bored. You know, and what else should they do besides try and be bad people, right? Because when I'm bored, I try and be a terrible person. Just kidding. I usually make YouTube videos. But anyways, right, Aaron and her group, are, and her group of, I'm just going to call them Aaron and her minions from here on out because that's really fitting for the story, right? Aaron and her minions were bored one day. So they thought to themselves, who can we mess with? Aaron and her, uh, I've finished, I, I, I'm 19 years old. Why am I still having voice cracks? Why? What? So Aaron and, oh my god, dude. Anyway, so Aaron and her minions, right? So Aaron and her minions were like, okay, I actually, we have a great idea. And they had a devious plot, right? Their plot was to basically Aaron to ask out the Minecraft kid on a date. And then during the date, like basically say, like troll him and be like, you know, I didn't actually want to go out with you. This is a big joke. Like, it sounds really immature as it is and cruel, but these were, like, the mean seventh grade girls. So, like, and, and in a sense, like, can you really, it, like, I'm not super shocked. It's still cruel and mean and, like, ridiculous, but I'm like, okay, mean seventh grade girls. I can kind of see it happening. Aaron and her minions thought their plan was, like, super funny or something. So they started going around telling a few people what they were planning to do. And these people, since they, they didn't necessarily fear them, but they didn't want to get to get on their bad sides, they were like, aha, yeah, that sounds like something, right? They didn't necessarily endorse it, but they also weren't like, you guys are awful for thinking of that. You guys are terrible people as they, as they were. And I don't want to, okay. When I say terrible person, I take that very lightly. They're in seventh grade. They're growing. They'll hopefully learn from their mistakes. But at that time, they were being pretty terrible kids, right? They're being terrible kids, right? Anyways, but this one girl that they told, they weren't 100% sure. They didn't know this, right? But this one girl that they also told about their plan was somewhat friends with the Minecraft kid. But this girl, instead of standing up for the Minecraft kid, 
decided to come up with something even better than saying don't do it. She crafted her own master plot. So this girl that Aaron and her minions told about their evil plot, who is also friends with the Minecraft kid, decided to, instead of like saying something, decided that she was going to inform the Minecraft kid of everything that Aaron and these girls were plotting. And then from there, they would be able to make their own plot and be able to, instead of allowing Aaron and their friends, and, and, and her friends, to troll the Minecraft kid and make fun of him, their plan was to actually, since of the inside information the Minecraft kid would have, would be to turn it, completely flip the tables, and kind of expose and then humiliate Aaron right, and kind of put her in her place. Hopefully, maybe, altering the course of her behavior from this point forward. Since we're kind of on an office-themed uh, naming selection, we're gonna call this girl Pam. Pam is, by the way, the girl that is friends with the Minecraft kid that Aaron and her minions told about the plan, right? So what Pam decided to do was, she decided to dig a little bit more, being like, oh, that's so funny, kind of egging it on a little bit to give them a bit of reinforcement to make it seem like she was actually on their side. And then Pam said, oh, when do you plan to do this? And Aaron and her minions said, oh, we plan to do this tomorrow. We're gonna ask him out tomorrow to go on a date with me later at lunch. And Aaron goes on to say, and I'm going to make the asking out pretty public so that people are aware of what's happening. And I'm going to have it, the date happen at lunch where everyone else is. So when I troll him publicly, everyone else will see and it'll be really funny and everyone will be in on the joke now. So Pam was a little bit like, wow, that's so cruel. But she only said that in her head because she didn't want to blow her cover. And she's like, that's so funny. Keep me updated. I can't wait to watch this. So then Pam goes and finds the Minecraft kid, and she basically explains everything to him that she was told. And then she says, all right, now we have the upper hand, we need to troll them back somehow. And the Minecraft kid sits there for a minute, and he honestly doesn't seem that offended by the whole thing, which honestly, I think I, if I was in the Minecraft kid's shoes, I would have been a little offended that someone even was planning to do something so cruel to me. It's not like, you know, Aaron and her gang had a, like, beef with the Minecraft kid. The Minecraft kid was just being, was just known as, like, the nice kind of, like, nerdy guy who girls didn't really want to get with. Like, it's unfortunate, man, but it is what it is. But people also knew him as the nice kid who played Minecraft. But, you know, the, the Minecraft kid sat there for a minute. He got this little smirk on his face. And he said, Aaron, I have a good idea. No, he didn't say Aaron, bro. He's not talking to Aaron. I'm sorry. The office is making me confused. He said, Pam, I got a good idea. I'm going to interrupt this video to tell you that the secret phrase of the day is house. So if you made it this far into the video, I want you to go down into the comment section and comment house down below, like the thing people live in, H-O-U-S-E. I just like to see... Yeah, I spelled that right. Okay, I was like panicked for a second. I'm like, did I just make myself look like a fool? Anyways, I just like to see who makes it this far into the video, and I will try and heart as many of those comments. So if you want to farm hearts and get top commenter, that's the best way to do it. With that being said, let's get back to the story. Right. So the Minecraft kid, you know, turns to Pam and says, I have the perfect plan. And the Minecraft kid tells Pam what his plan is. I'm not going to spoil it yet. I'm just going to tell you what happens, and I'll reveal exactly what the plan is after I tell you what happens, right? So the next day rolls around and it's the morning and the Minecraft kid is just kind of chilling there, playing Minecraft as he's known to like do, right? So the Minecraft kid is just chilling there. And basically what happens is like he's waiting and he's waiting for, uh, you know, Aaron and her minions to come over and for Aaron to like ask him out on a date, all public and like everyone's gonna know and they're, they're going to be all like, oh my God, and he's supposed to react like, oh my gosh, the popular girl wants to go on a date with me. But little do they know, the Minecraft kid's actually in on it, and he's got his own plot, and he himself has a plot as well. The thing was, uh, since Aaron and her like minions told so many people about the plan, it basically got around to everyone what the plan was. And like a few people actually did try and tell the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid's like, went up to them, he's like, I'm totally aware, I got a plan of my own, do not let Aaron know that I know. And honestly, that was a little risky, like, there was a chance Aaron would have found out, but thankfully, Aaron didn't find out. So Aaron and her, you know, like, her minions go up to him, and very loudly, Aaron's like, hey, Minecraft kid, I, she actually says his real name, right, but I'm, we're calling him Minecraft kid, hey, Minecraft kid, 
wow, you're so cute. Do you want to go on a date with me? And she says it in such like an animated, like fake way that it's so obvious. But the Minecraft kid said, decides to play into it because he wants to have his own plot happen. He said, oh, wow, really? Yeah, sure. And she's like, oh, let's go like, let's go on a date at lunch today. And she looks around the room, Aaron looks around the room. And she's like, like winking and everything. And people are kind of grimacing because they're like, this is beyond cruel and messed up, right? They're like, hey, yo, right? This is insane. And uh, and he's like, yeah, sure. And Aaron and her friends walk back to the front of the room. They're all smirking and like, they're kind of like talking to people because they're in on the joke, but they don't realize that Minecraft Kid has a, has a whole has a whole trick up his sleeve, dude. The subscriber that told this story knows all of this because he was one of the people who was told about Aaron's plan and he actually went up to the Minecraft kid and told him and he was told by the Minecraft kid, like, I got a plot of my own. And afterwards, he went up to the Minecraft kid and asked for like a rundown of everything. Lunch eventually comes around and their scheduled date is about to happen. And the Minecraft kid is sitting there all confident because, you know, he knows what's about to go down, and he knows that no one else besides maybe Pam knows about what knows what's about to go down. So Erin comes down, she goes over to the table, and she sits down, and she has this smirk. The plan is for Erin to eventually start, like, at one point, pretty soon, to be like, this isn't a real date. Like, this was a prank. I would never go out with someone like you. I know, sounds like ridiculously cruel. This is seventh grade, my guys. Like, I don't, I don't know how else to say it, right? But anyways, right, right before Aaron is able to say anything, the Minecraft kid says, oh, my fault, getting a phone call right now. The Minecraft kid starts talking really loudly, and he says, yeah, no, I'm not doing anything important right now. Yeah, no, I'd love to go on a date. Right now? Yeah, just come into the, just come into the lunchroom. I'd love to go on a date with you. And Aaron's just sitting there like, hey, yo, what's happening? So basically, the Minecraft kid had an older sister who was one grade older. And this older sister was pretty popular, but she was very nice. And this older sister had a friend who was very, very pretty and known as being like one of the prettiest girls in the school. And Minecraft kid told his older sister about what had happened, and he asked if that pretty friend can pretend to go on a date with him, right? And she said, yeah, of course. And the pretty friend was like totally in on it. We're gonna call the pretty friend, we're gonna call her Audrey, right? So my, back to the story, Minecraft kid is sitting there and Aaron is just like, what? She's completely like, completely just like flabbergasted. And people around her we were listening in because they were like, this is about to be so cruel and just like a bloodbath. Like we, we do want to hear what happens though. And they're like, oh my God. And they start whispering and word starts to spread of what Minecraft kid just said. And as people were starting to like, start to realize what was happening, the doors open and Audrey, the Minecraft kid's older sister, very hot friend walks in and it's just like sits down and says, hey, like she comes up to the Minecraft kid and she's like, hey, do you want to go on a date? And he said, yeah, sure. Let's go over there. And Aaron is just like, complete, her face is just like no emotion, completely void of emotion. And so, yeah, the Minecraft kid and Audrey just go over to another table and they're sitting there having a good discussion because like Audrey's been over to the house a couple times because she's friends with the Minecraft kid's older sister. So like the Minecraft kid and Audrey are actually like low-key kind of friends and they talk about like some nerdy stuff together that Audrey doesn't have a lot of friends to talk about with. But anyways, right, right the impression is that Minecraft kid basically decided to level up mid-date, which you should never actually do. That's a very cruel thing to do. But the reason why he did it is because, like, he was trying to, like, Aaron deserved it at this point, right? So what happened was Aaron kind of had to do a walk of shame as word spread about what happened. Yeah, that was the ending of the story. Uh, pretty crazy, right? If you guys want to submit your own stories, Instagram Connor Pugs down below. If you want to support the channel, literally just go ahead and watch another one of my story time videos or click on the story time link, which is first link in the description to go watch some old videos and support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. In Peace. today's subscriber story, this spoiled rich girl is being a huge brat on the school's field trip. Till a pretty hilarious twist happens, and it's probably one of the greatest uh, examples of instant karma I've ever seen. Enjoy. Story all happens on a school trip to a dinosaur museum. This was the subscriber's like key event for his year in fifth grade. 
The big thing they did was they went to this dinosaur museum as a class, and it was kind of like the big culminating final event. So this happened towards the end of his fifth grade year. And this was like a very big deal for everyone as like they studied an entire unit on dinosaurs, they finished up a final project, and the big kind of reward slash payoff would be to go to this dinosaur museum, just kind of like check out all the cool like skeletons and fossils and models and like oh, just have a really good time, right? So everyone there was pretty excited, and you know, the day happened, and the subscriber and his friends, they load onto the bus, and uh, you know, they sat in the towards the back, they're sitting like with the boys, you know, I don't know if you guys have been like on field trip buses, it's just like, a really good spot towards the back with your friends, just having a good time, it's a great time, right? Anyways, but it wasn't a perfect field trip ride over, unfortunately, and I'll get into that right now. So there was this girl in the subscribers class, and her name was Betty, and right, her parents made a lot of money, and right off the bat, there's nothing wrong with that, like, she can't do anything about that, she can't do anything about her parents making a little bit of money, a lot of money, a moderate amount of money, uh, you know, it, it's not in her control. So that's not, I'd never look down on someone for that alone, right? But it's really the way you act about it. Like, and Betty, let's just say, took it in the worst way possible. She basically acted the worst because of it. And that's something that is 100% in your control, man. Like, I know it's like, oh, the parents raised her. Dude, you're in fifth grade at this point. Like, it's time to grow up. I, I know I'm saying like fifth grader, time to grow up. But at some point, man, like, I don't know, dude. Like, yeah, it's definitely on the parents for like raising a kid, like and teaching them the wrong things. But uh, time to grow up. All I'm gonna say time to grow up. Anyways, Betty was known as being kind of like the snotty, spoiled girl, right? And uh, on this field trip on the ride over, she just started talking about how she was so excited to go to the, the gift store. And everyone else was actually, you know, who was on the bus was talking about what they were excited about, kind of like, I can't wait to see the big, you know, dinosaur sculptures. I can't wait to, you know, uh, check out the big model. Like, I'm going to take a photo with it. I'm going to go send it to my mom. She's going to be so excited. Like, this is going to be so cool. And Betty's like, what Betty was talking about and talking about very loudly to, like, the one person she sat with. Because Betty didn't really have a lot of friends because, I mean, she kind of caused that herself because of her actions, but it is what it is, right? But Betty did sit down with someone uh, forcibly, so she was telling them and saying it loud enough so that as many people as possible could hear, as well as the subscriber could hear, because that's how I know about this part, right? That, you know, she actually just got a new credit card from her dad, and she will be maxing it out in the gift store, and she's so excited to buy stuff in the gift store, and then she kind of, like, looks around and then she like looks at the person she's sitting next to and is like can you max out your credit card in the gift store and the random girl who's sitting next to her is like dude i'm a fifth grader i don't have a credit card i have like 25 dollars in a bank account that was given to me by my aunt for halloween or something dude like you and i are just we're just not the same and uh yeah no i will not be buying anything in the gift store i do have ten dollars for lunch, though, since we do need to bring a little bit of money to buy lunch there. Like, you know, like, that's all I have. Like, I'm not planning on maxing out a credit card for the gift store, but you do you, Betty. Like, have a good life. I don't really care. Subscriber that sent in the story and his friends kind of, like, looked at each other, like, rolled their eyes because this is not the first time Betty has said something, like, kind of out of pocket like this. I mean, he gave one example in the DM he sent to me. By the way, if you want to have your own stories featured on the channel, DM my Instagram the stories, the handles in the description. Anyways, he also gave me a previous story, which I'm just going to tack on real quick to give you guys a little bit of context of Betty. By the way, subscribe if you like story videos. That's it. Back to the story. So this mini story happened just a few weeks ago before the dinosaur big story, right? Basically, at this subscriber's school, you could either get the lunch there or you could bring your own lunch. And one of these days, Betty didn't bring her own lunch. And her own lunch used to be this really, like, fancy stuff that her nanny or whatever would make. And one day, like, for some reason, she forgot it. And she had to eat the school lunch. And the school lunch was not that great. It was not the most epic thing ever. But the thing was, like, everyone kind of dealt with it or they brought their own lunch, but sometimes they'd actually have to eat the school lunch. It was just something you dealt with. But when Betty had to start eating the school lunch, it was put on her plate. She went down to sit down and just started crying in the middle of the, of the dining hall, bro. And everyone was just like, dude, we all have to do this too. Just get over yourself. 
So that was just like a little context of Betty, right? So right, they're on the bus. Betty's talking about how she's going to buy out the gift shop and how she's so excited to do that. And they eventually arrive at the place, at the museum. So they kind of file out of the bus. They take a head count. They have like the buddy system. Poor girl who sat next to Betty just like not at her own will, right? Was kind of forced to be buddies with her because you had to be buddies with who you're on the bus with. And, you know, so they they all walked out. They all went into the museum. Basically, the teachers kind of said, hey, feel free to go wherever as long as it's within the museum. However, you have to be back at 12 for lunch. Everyone make sure to bring your $10 that you brought, right? Or whatever method you'll be paying uh, as we'll all be going to get lunch together. May but other than that, Feel free to just roam around and do whatever you want. The subscriber and his friends obviously went around to see all the cool, like, sculptures and dinosaur, you know, stuff. And just, just a lot of the cool stuff associated with, like, you know, the, the skeletons. They actually had some real fossils there. So they checked those out. And they saw this. They went down to also see a screening of, like, a little, like, 15-minute long, like, little movie that the, the museum made, which was really cool as they tried to, like, recreate, like, an, the extinction event with the asteroid or whatever. But anyways, they're having a good time. But then Betty comes up to them. And here's the thing. They're not friends with Betty, but they're also not, like, enemies or have never not spoken to Betty because their class isn't, like, the largest class size ever. It's not small necessarily. But they at least have had enough interactions with Betty that Betty feels comfortable enough to like go up to them and like talk to them right she's at least that level of comfort so betty's like hey come with me guys i want to show you something and they at first kind of were like not really thinking that much they're like the subscriber was like i'm gonna be honest like we were being kind of dumb because like we definitely knew what betty was saying on the bus but we were just like oh maybe she found a really cool dinosaur sculpture man like i don't know or a really cool part of the exhibit that we haven't seen yet like let's just go with her and right, she's like kind of like dragging one of them, the other couple are following behind, and they're moving past all these exhibits, and you know, one of them looks up and there's a sign that says gift shop like a minute away that way. The dude's like, oh no, dude, like no way, like we're not going shopping on like the most fun vacation of the year. Like I have to do that with my mom on the weekends. I hate doing that, like bro, why would I intentionally do that? But it was already too late. They were already dragged there. And then Betty's like, and now I'm going to buy whatever I want. And there was like another girl in, you know, in the bookshop, not the bookshop, the gift shop. And she was like trying to decide between like a dinosaur stuffed animal or this like coloring book. And then like Betty goes up to her and is like, look what I can do. And just like unironically just like grabs both, not like the items that the girl was holding because there was multiple of them, but grabs the items that the other girl in their grade was deciding between, puts them in a bag, and then keeps walking around just putting random stuff in her bag. So at first the subscriber and his friends were kind of planning on, you know, dipping within like a couple seconds of getting there because they're like, dude, we don't want to be here. But they were like, they actually decided to stay and just like watch the whole thing go down because... Betty literally went through and got one of everything. And I'm not even kidding, man. She went out of there with like six to seven bags full of like stuff. One of basically every item in the gift shop. Yeah, it wasn't like a Toys R Us size gift shop where it's like multiple floors or anything, but it was a decent sized gift shop. This was not some kind of like little like shack on wheels. This was a, a, legitimate, a legitimate gift shop. Like the museum definitely made some bread there. Um, so they wanted to like flesh it out and have a lot of options for people to buy. And Betty literally bought every option. Like she, like on a multiple choice test, she literally just chose D, all of the above. It's crazy. But here's the thing, right? Betty probably didn't want every item that she bought. In fact, there's probably only a few items that she really wanted. If she, if she even wanted any of the items at all, because she did seem pretty like not interested in the whole like in the rest of the museum, so why would she care about all these things, like, that she could buy at the gift shop? What she really wanted, right, was to, like, fill the bags, buy all this stuff, and then walk around to the, like, walk around the museum, find as many of the people who went to her school as possible, and just kind of, like, show off the bags. Like, walk up to them and be like, oh, man, this is so heavy. My arms hurt so much from carrying all this stuff I just bought. I bought one of everything, bro. Like, look at me. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to interrupt the story for just a second and ask you to go ahead and comment. Comment snow in the comment section down 
down below. That's the secret phrase of today's video. And I just wanna see how many people actually made it this far into the video as I do appreciate it as watch time is good. And also you can see who else like actually watched it. And it's like a little secret club or whatever. Anyways, back to the story. So Betty does eventually go around walking with all the bags and it was heavy. Like she was dedicated to the flex. Like she was very dedicated to showing off to as many people as possible that she basically bought one of everything when it came to the stuff in the, in the gift store. Like she said that on the bus and she said it loud enough that like she knew at least a decent handful of people had heard her and she wanted to make sure that everyone knew that she like was true on her promise. So she did that. She just walked around with these big bags and was like a ha ha, right? And okay, so it's 12, right? Or it's like 11.50. People are starting to walk over and to the food line because as you know, I said earlier at 12, the teacher said, hey, we got to reconvene so we can all get lunch together and also just take a little head count. Like they're staying till like two or three or I don't even know, probably like a couple more hours, but they just wanted to reconvene at lunch to make sure that like, everyone was doing all right. Anyway, so they all get into line and like the subscriber is in line with his friends and they happen to be right behind this girl. They're right behind Betty. Sorry, for, I forgot the fake name for a second. Um, but anyways, right, so they're behind Betty in line and the line's moving up and basically you hand them the 10 bucks or you insert the credit card or you know, maybe you hand them the like 2000 pennies or whatever it costs for like 10 bucks. I didn't do the math. And Anyway, so it's Betty's turn, and she just instantly just drops the card on, like, the, the, the machine. She hands it to the dude. The dude swipes it, and the dude's like, uh, sorry, like, uh, it, it declined. And she just looks at them like, swipe it again. So he swipes it again, and he's like, nope, still declined. And then she starts to, like, panic a little bit, because now there's a little bit of a line behind her. Everyone just heard that her card declined. She checks the app, because it's, like, connected to an app or something. Basically, they froze the card, because she paid for She bought too many things too quickly on a card that was too brand new, and kind of, like, because the museum was kind of far away in, like, a, a location that wasn't normal, so they froze her account. And she couldn't pay for anything. And it wasn't like in her name because she was in fifth grade, dude. Like obviously it was not in her name. It was in her dad's name. So it needed her dad to like figure that out. And he was like busy at work during this time. And she knew that. So basically she had no money. She couldn't buy lunch at this point. So she just like, she had to do, it was after going around everywhere and she's still holding these big bags of like all the stuff she bought with the credit card. She now has to do a walk of shame all the way back, asking every single person in line, hey, do you have any money I could borrow? A complete three, a complete 180 from what she was doing like five minutes ago. And you know who ended up having the extra 10 bucks that like she could actually like lend to Betty? The girl that she snubbed in the, in, in the gift shop, the one that she went and bought both of the items, right? And uh, you know why she gets an extra 10 bucks? Because she decided to buy neither and save the $10, right? But she obviously, she gave it to Betty. She's like, I don't, like, yeah, you're kind of a jerk to me, but I don't want you to go hungry, right? So just pay me back later. And yeah, that was probably, the, the like, that subscriber witnessing the whole thing was like, that was like probably one of the most, like, instant karma, quickest humble moments he's ever seen. Thanks guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you wanna support the channel, just go ahead and watch another story video. One of the easiest ways to do that is to watch the story time playlist, which is first link in the description. So yeah, see the next one, peace. Today's story is about this spoiled kid who went absolutely off the rails. Like this kid went absolutely crazy when someone said you can't have everything basically. Uh, enjoy the story. So the subscriber who sent in the story, let's call him Ryan. So anyways, Ryan is like a fresh in high school and in one of his classes I don't think it really matters let's just say math class for the sake of it in his math class right there's this kid named Jack and Jack is known for you know kind of being like the you know the spoiled kid who like is an absolute jerk like an absolute nuisance who honestly like when because he was get basically when you're given everything and when you're never told no you're probably most likely maybe I'm wrong on this but you're most likely probably not gonna be like the greatest person ever uh, you, may, you might not have like the, the greatest moral compass ever. I don't know, man. I really don't know. But at least in this case, yeah, Jack, not a good guy. Granted, right, Jack's a freshman in high school, right? He's still a kid. He'll grow up. And also, you know, it's a lot of it's on the parents for how you raise them. But e either way, right, Jack's kind of known as like a jerk. 
So uh, Ryan had kind of gone to like the same middle school with all the people that he's going to high school in. Like, you know, he just kind of went to, you know, he goes to high school with the kids in his town and, you know, he went to middle school with them as well. But basically, right, so, you know, it's his first time in high school, but it's all the same kids, except a new girl kind of like moves in. And because she moved in in the district, she's now assigned to this school. And uh, we're, we're not going to get – I'm, I'm a little conflicted if I give her a name or not because now I'm going to have three names to juggle in my head, uh, and I will totally mess it up. But, yeah, let's just call her Kate, right? Screw it. New girl. Her name's Kate. And, uh, you know, so they get to class, and everyone's kind of, like, a little bit nervous because it is, you know, it's, it's, the, first, it's the first day of high school, right? But Kate's kind of like – She's in a different picture because she doesn't know these people and it's the first day of high school. So it's like a really, really big deal for her. It's a little bit different. So they get into class and, you know, it's everyone's kind of looking around and, they, you know, they notice the new girl, Kate, and they're like, oh, like they all kind of like introduce each other, like are themselves. And they're like, hey, welcome. Like, if you have any questions, let us know. Like, we're like obviously new to high school as well, but we kind of all know each other. So feel free to like, you know, talk to us if you need anything. And uh, here's the thing, right? Jack, who's the spoiled kid, right? Not the subscriber. Subscriber's Ryan. But Jack, who's like the spoiled kid, always got everything he ever wanted, right? So, uh, you know, he also, he kind of had like an idea that like if he wanted something or someone in this case, that they would be, you know, that they have to, you know, be there for him and he has to get them. And he kind of had this attitude towards women, which is pretty toxic. Like, let me just say, like, guys, fellas. Uh, no, no one is entitled to you. Like, LMAO, you should know this, but uh, no one is entitled to you, man. And if you act like someone is, they will definitely not get with you. Like, 100,000%. But I think most of you guys already knew that. I don't know how I'm even saying that, too. Uh, if, if, for example, Jack is watching this video... That's a lesson for him, but I doubt any of you guys actually needed me to say that. Anyways, right, so on the first day, uh, Jack makes a really, a real effort to, like, talk to, you know, talk to Kate, right? And, uh, you know, normally that's definitely not a bad thing at all, if anything, right? Like, that's a good thing, man. You might be thinking to yourself or about to type up, like, well, Connor, this is actually a good thing. He was probably just trying to make her feel good. You don't want her to feel good? No, 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 but he was like, you have to understand, he was like going really hard talking to her, be like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, like, he was very obviously, like, hitting on her. And, you know, she was very polite and, like, like kept the conversation with him because, like, dude, she's new there. She can't, like, be like, nah, bro, like, like just, like, piss off. Like, she, she, can't, she just can't do that because she's, like, too new there, unfortunately. And the dude kind of knew that. Like, Jack kind of knew that. And he was like, yeah, I'm just going to talk her up, bro. She's going to fall in love with me because, like, who doesn't fall in love with me, dude? I'm loved by the masses. I'm loved by the individuals. I'm loved by all the women ever. Every woman loves me. That was kind of his mindset. Um, but anyways, right, so that's that's not really an issue in itself. Dude talks the girl up a lot, whatever, right? But it's the next day that when it rolls around. When the next day rolls around is when things got uh, things got pretty bad. Things started to escalate, right? So anyways, next day in math class, they had a whole day, like a whole first day or whatever. And uh, the second day... Teacher ends up being like, you know, 10, 15 minutes late, traffic or something. I don't 100% know. But within those 10 to 15 minutes, man, things just spiral downhill so quickly. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So the second day rolls around and, you know, you know, you got you got Ryan, you got Jack, you got Kate, the new girl, and you got everyone else in class. And they're all kind of just sitting around. And Ryan's talking with one of his friends, but he notices that Jack is, like, once again talking to Kate, which, first of all, totally fine, whatever, right? It, it is what it is. He's probably, like, just trying to make her, you know, feel welcome, which is definitely not what he was trying to do, but whatever, right? So he starts saying, like, yeah, like... Uh, I'm totally single right now. He just brings up. He brings up for no, like, in the middle of nothing. She was saying something about, like, oh, are you, like, feel good about this math class? He's like, yeah, whatever, right? I'm totally single right now, bro. Like, he just kind of, like, hopped from one thing to another. And, yeah, he was basically just, like, talking about how, oh, man, like, he is in between girlfriends right now. And, like, his last girlfriend was, like, super hot. Uh, but she went to a different school. Okay, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't say that line exactly. He didn't quote unquote say she went to a different school. But it was like his hot girlfriend over the summer. All right, buddy. Sure. Yeah, your hot girlfriend over the summer who just broke up with you. By the way, by the way, he broke up with her. Do not get it twisted. Do not get it twisted for a second. No, no, no. It was him. He. he she was just like not good enough for him. Even though he. She was an eleven out of ten. Jack. This guy Jack is a twelve out of ten. You guys don't even understand. 
So, right, so Kate is, like, whatever, right? She's kind of, like, okay, and she tries, she's like, oh, like, I'm sorry to hear that, and then she tries to change the subject, right? And at this point, Ryan, the subscriber, is starting to notice the weird conversation. He's overhearing it a bit, and now he's listening in a bit more intensely, and he can tell that Kate is trying to change the conversation, because she said something about, like, the first homework assignment they got, because this is their only second day, and, like, how much more can they really talk about? And Jack's like, oh, yeah, that was, like, super easy, did that in, like, five seconds, whatever. And, uh, you know, he's like, you know, you know, I've really been missing, like, a woman's touch. And at this point, Ryan was like, hey, yo, hey, what the, what? Huh? Uh, bro, are, are you, are you okay? Like, excuse me, sir, is, is everything okay? And at this point, Kate's like, uh, okay. And Ryan's like, no, not Ryan, sorry, no, no, no. And this is what happens when I have multiple names. Jack is like... So, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, you know, maybe, maybe tonight we could go, you know, get something to eat. And by the way, this isn't like, this wouldn't be a friendly thing. This would like totally be a dating thing. This would be like, you'd be my girlfriend. And like, I know it's like a huge opportunity for you. Like, especially since like my status in the school, everyone, when they heard that, they're just like, bro, what? Like, no one really likes you, dude. Lol. No, but he, he was like, you know, with my whole status in the school and kind of like my my position, just kind of like, you know, my care, everything like about me. I know this is a really big, a big opportunity um, and uh, I'm going to need you to respond pretty quickly because like I got some other side women uh, lined up. Total cap, by the way, he 100,000 percent did not. But he's like, yeah, I got some other I got some other girls on the side that would totally be down, like so down to do this with me. But I got an opportunity for you, which is like you and me tonight, dinner, dating, maybe a little little hand holding, maybe a little first base. I don't really know, like whatever you want to do. It's tough. And at this point, like Ryan's like, no way this kid just said that. No way this kid just said that. That kind of like ends his whole like long rambling oh you should totally go out with me i got so many women who love me kind of like spiel or whatever at this point the class like kind of went silent because they were all paying attention because like i'll be honest i probably would have done the same like totally unfortunate for kate that she has to be in this position but like uh this is interesting man i want to know what happens and ryan was also like oh my god this kid actually said it like this guy Jack unironically just said what he just said and Kate kind of looks at him and is like uh sorry I'm gonna have to decline you seem really nice but that's just not for me and at this point Jack right you know his little his, li his not his little am I am I kidding myself his massive ego just got a prick in it and it starts to deflate and, you know, he feels very threatened. So he's like, oh, he's like, well, I was actually, uh, yeah, I got, I got, I, well, okay then, you know, I'll, I'm going to hit up this girl. She's like actually much hotter than you. I don't even know why. I don't even know why I asked you. You're like, you're not even a 10 and I only date 10s. Ryan has been listening to the whole conversation. And at this point, Ryan's like, whoa, all right, all right. Because like, look, before he asked her on a date right away, being super cocky. All that is is kind of cringe and uncomfortable for the girl and Kate and basically everyone else, which, like, you should make her feel uncomfortable, but, like, you're allowed to ask people out. Even if you're super cringe, you're allowed to be cringe, right? But, like, going after her looks because she said no to you, and especially since, like, you don't even know this girl, like, she she doesn't think it's a joke because, you know, one, he wasn't joking. He wasn't, like, actually thought that because, you know, he asked around in the first place. But Ryan's like, okay. That's where I draw the line. So Ryan gets up and he's like, hey, Jack, can you piss off? Like, stop being an absolute jerk. Like, she said no to you. Unlucky, move on. And Jack just looks so startled because, like, no one really... It's not that people didn't stand up to Jack before. They just kind of saw him as a joke. Like, okay, this, like... This guy's just, like, super entitled. He's just kind of a jerk, but, like, it's funny because he's in a completely different world. Like, he's detached from reality. Let's laugh at him and point. Not like someone actually stands up to him. But obviously, like, he'd gone... A every everyone there kind of, like, knew J about Jack and his, like, antics. But the fact that Jack would be, like, would say something, like, like uh, honestly so hurtful to someone who's new, you know, it was actually Ryan's cool guy for doing this, and he stood up. And that's... And that's when Jack 
completely loses it. Because one, he just got his ego deflated a little bit by this girl saying no. And then a random classmate, or not a random classmate, but then a classmate stands up to him. Jack can't have this happen. And Jack goes completely off the rails. The secret word of the today's video is spoiled. So if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. I just like to see how many people made it this far into the video as I do appreciate the watch time. That's probably one of the greatest ways to help the channel. And I just want to say thanks. And to say thanks, I'll be hearting some comments to say that. I can't heart them all because I just physically can't spend that much time doing that, uh, but I will do my best to heart as many as I can. So if you want to get like top commenter or farm some hearts or something, yeah, just go ahead and comment spoiled down below. And also, today, today's your lucky day because every single person who leaves a like on this video will receive nothing. You heard me. No, 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 don't. Your ears aren't, you know, your ears aren't clogged. You're not hallucinating. I am legitimately feeling so generous that I will give you nothing if you leave a like on this video. Anyways, mini recap. Ryan, right, you know, the subscriber, stood up to Jack for basically, you know, saying something pretty mean to the new girl, Kate, for rejecting him. Jack, who's never, ba who's basically never gotten known his entire life, just got no, or just got owned twice in like the span of a minute. And his, you know, in, in, a, in a, he just goes completely crazy. He just goes completely insane. At this point, right, the teacher had actually gotten there. But he stood outside the door and had listened to the last, like, 30 seconds, basically, of Ryan standing up to Jack. And he, he stood outside because he wanted to, like, not interrupt the situation because he wanted to hear what was going to happen just in case he needed to, like, intervene or something. And Jack stood up and he's like, Ryan, I could literally buy you. I have so much money. And he turns to Kate like, Kate, I get girls so much hotter than you. I have 11s. I have three of them hitting me up right now. I have to turn my phone on. Do not disturb. I have so much money that I could buy the entire school. I basically own the school. I could basically own you. I could basically own the entire town. You know the mall. I own the mall. You know that. And he goes on this complete tirade of how he's like the hottest, most wealthiest, most attractive man. Like, this guy was, like, straight-up delusional at this point because his ego had been broken so much. At this point, the teacher walks in and is like, Jack! And Jack looks at him all, like, like startled and like, oh, boy. <laughs> and he's like, Jack, to the front office, now! And Jack starts walking up, and he turns to Ryan, and he's like, hey, Ryan, you're not in trouble, but can you come up there, too? We just need someone to explain the situation. And Ryan's like, yeah, sure, like, 100%, I got you. And basically, right, so, you know, Ryan and Jack go up to the front office, and the principal actually has Ryan come in first and explain the situation without Jack there to, like, interrupt or whatever. And, yeah, Ryan explains exactly what happened, and he says to the principal, and if you don't believe me, you can literally ask any other classmate, and they'll say basically the same thing. The principal's like, you know what, you don't have any reason to lie, we believe you on this one. And, uh, yeah, Jack got sent home for the day, and, uh, he didn't get, like, expelled or anything, and he didn't get suspended for that long of a period of time, but he basically had to type up a written apology to Ryan and Kate, and also one to the entire class, which, uh, was pretty humiliating, but well-deserved, and maybe grounded him a little bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. Go click on one of the videos on screen. Go click. Why haven't you Today's yet? story is about a spoiled kid who actually tells another kid that his parents suck, because they make less money than his parents. Like, oh my god. Anyways, enjoy the story. Anyways, let's call the subscriber who sent in the story, and by the way, send in stories to my Instagram, link in description, or thing in description. Let's call the subscriber who sent in the story, let's call him Calvin, right? So anyways, right, Calvin's at school. I think Calvin's in middle school. I don't really know exactly what grade, but Calvin's in middle school, and he's out at recess with his recess. Why did I say it like that? Oh my god. So Calvin and all of his buddies, they were out at recess, and, uh, you know, out at recess with them was the classmate that they had. This classmate, uh, let's call him Clyde. Yeah, so Clyde was kind of known as being, like, you know, the spoiled kid, the jerk kid, the kid who's like, here's the thing, there's literally nothing wrong with your parents, you know, making a lot of money. There's nothing wrong with them making an average amount of money. There's nothing wrong with them making no money. There's nothing wrong with them being secret agents for the Illuminati. It really doesn't matter, you know? But the thing is, it also, it matters how that affects the way you act. If your parents make a lot of money and you're like, oh, I'm more important than everyone else because they make a lot of money, well, okay. That's the problem, right? If you're going around screaming at people, uh, you're worth as much as my shoe because you don't have a lot of money, then you know what? You're the problem, man. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're the problem on this one. Anyways, right, so Clyde was kind of known as, like, the kid who was kind of, like, 
a, a massive jerk, and one of the reasons why he was a jerk is because he was pretty arrogant because of the money his parents made. Once again, nothing wrong with that fact alone, but something wrong with the way he acted. So anyways, right, one day, one day, good old Calvin, his friends, and Clyde were all out at recess, and they were just hanging out, they were talking, they were having a pretty good day. I mean, man, it's recess. If there's one thing I miss from middle school, it's recess, dude. But anyways, right, they're all out there having a wonderful time, having a good day. It is what it is. They were just out there uh, mining some Bitcoin, just like what normal kids do, playing on their abacuses, abacus, abacus, I don't know what the plural is. While the school kind of like had a loose rule saying, you can't be on your phone during school, you can't be on your phone during lunch, you can't be on your phone during recess, right? Kind of yada yada on like that. It really wasn't enforced and like teachers would see kids on their phone all the time. And when the rule was like introduced like years ago, like at the very beginning, apparently they they did try and actually enforce it. But over time, they just kind of quit. They kind of just gave up. So the kids at recess were also on their phones. But the thing is, right, Clyde had just gotten the new high-tech Apple iPhone 368 plus plus minus plus. Like he was like, he had the new gold plated. He had the, like the 500 terabyte storage iPhone. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this kid Clyde, he got the new the newest, most expensive, most, you know, coolest version of the new iPhone or whatever, right? And uh, he made a very big deal out of it. And he was like, ah, oh, guys, guys, do you see my iPhone? Oh, it's it's the new one. Guy, guys, did you see the commercial for the new one? Yeah, it's the one I have. You know how much storage this has? More than your iPhone, baby. It has more, I, it has mo more storage than your iPhone. I I'll bet all the money in the world on that. And by the way, I have all the money in the world. Like, he, he was just kind of on, on this kind of like, tan like, <laughs> I was gonna say tirade, and I also was thinking of rampage, so I was about to call it a tamprage, which just sounds like a tampon. <laughs> Funny tampon. <laughs> and he just keeps going on and on about how he has the new phone. But the thing is, the thing, because like that's annoying enough if you're bragging, right? You're kind of being a jerk when you brag like that, 100%. But the problem really came, right? The problem really came when he started taking a look at everyone else's phones and being like, oh my god, you have the iPhone, you only have the iPhone 15, dude. Like, okay, this was like years ago, so this probably was like the iPhone 3 or something, or 4. I don't even know. He's like, oh my god, you got the iPhone 4? Like, I bet you don't even have any storage. And then goes to another person like, oh my god, you literally have an Android that's so cringe or whatever. By the way, like I got some, I got some friends with Androids. Like they get, they get kind of like they get, you know, they get some jokes sent their way. But dude, some of those Androids function really well. I'm personally an iPhone guy. I'm just not. I'm just used to it, dude. I'm used to it. I like. I'm literally recording this video on my iPhone. Oh yeah. A fun fact, small tangent, I've recorded every single video I've made on my iPhone. Yeah, you don't need a fancy setup to get a lot of subs. Anyways, back to the story, right? So he's just starting to make fun of them, and the kids are starting to get a little bit annoyed. They're like, dude, piss off, like, LOL, like, we don't really care. And he's like, <laughs> and he just goes on this little, like, l this little rampage, right? Anyways, right, so they hear the bell, and that means, you know, recess is done, you have to go back inside. And everyone's, like, a little bit annoyed, including, you know, Calvin, the subscriber who sent in this story. Everyone's a little bit annoyed, at least, because because like that was kind of an annoying thing to do. But at the end of the day, it was Clyde. But here's the thing, Clyde had kind of been doing this stuff for a while. And while you could say on one hand, they were getting used to like Clyde's like out of pocket statements, at the other on the other hand, they were getting pretty annoyed. They were starting to get a little fed up at Clyde, right? They weren't very happy with the kid. And this was just another really annoying one. And this one, like this kind of like rampage about how he was cool because he had the phone and they weren't cool because they didn't have the phone. Normally Clyde was more like bragging about himself or more really bragging about his parents or whatever and what he had because of his parents. But he'd been more recently and really starting with this whole iPhone bit, he'd started to like include in his like how cool he was he started to include how not cool and how everyone else sucked because they didn't have what he had didn't have what he had and that's where people start to get a little bit more annoyed than normal so the next day rolls around and once again all the kids are out there at recess right calvin the subscriber he's chilling with his friends all the kids are out there all of his friends and then there's also clyde who's out there uh, notice how I made sure to have a very big distinction between all of his friends and then also Clyde. Uh, anyways, right, they're all out there, they're at recess, and then, you know, one of the kids comes out. And this kid, uh, I'm not gonna give him a name because he only appears in the story really at this point only. But he was like a, known as kind of like a really good, he's a really solid guy. 
but also like, you know, his parents were going through a little bit of a tough time. You know, he didn't have a lot of disposable income and kind of like the neighborhood or the, you know, the, the basically the kids who were lived near uh, Calvin. Calvin lived in a, like a neighborhood that was like mostly middle class, but it was kind of lower middle class. Clyde was kind of like an exception to the rule where his parents made it really big. And, but most people there didn't. Most people were actually underwater a little bit. And this kid who we're about to talk about in a second was no exception, but he was also known as just being a really genuine guy. And so, you know, Clyde's there and this kid has his backpack on with him. I think cause like, I don't know, he had like a project he wanted to work on or he just didn't want to like put it somewhere then pick it up later for class. For some reason, right, this kid had his backpack on him and you know, his backpack was pretty worn. This guy's had it since like, you know, his first day in preschool or something or kindergarten. And it's really worn out. It's really, it's kind of tattered. It's stained at this point. And Clyde, right, I guess he just never really noticed it or thought to say anything. But Clyde starts making fun of this kid for like how like, kind of like, messed up his backpack is at this point. And Clyde's like, oh my God, dude, why don't you just get a new backpack? That one's disgusting. I bet there's a disease festering on that backpack. I bet that there's a whole host of new diseases that could probably be named after you because they were invented on your backpack. <laughs> just going off like that, right? And then, and then like all the kids around him start looking at Clyde like, dude, what would you, like shut shut up. And Clyde is like, uh, what? I'm spitting facts, guys. Uh -huh. This backpack sucks. And everyone's like, dude, just like, you know, like, go away for a second. And Clyde's like, what? Uh, whatever, at least my backpack is cool. And he goes away, right? And so the kids are like, yo, sorry, like, Clyde's being an extra jerk today. And the kid with the backpack's like, dude, I literally don't care. Like, this this kid had a lot of good character, man. He was just like, he, he really didn't let it affect him. He was actually probably one of the kids who was, like, less, like, the least uh, tilted by, like, everything that Clyde did. But, you know, he's this good kid, good character. Anyways, right, Clyde comes back with his backpack, which, like, he bought, like, you know, two weeks ago or something, so it's new, no stains on it, looking good, and Clyde's, uh, uh, yeah, Clyde's like, oh, this backpack's so heavy, I'm just gonna put it down for a sec, takes his backpack off, puts it in front of everyone's like, oh, yeah, I just got this backpack a couple weeks ago, it's super cool, and everyone's like, I right, Clyde, <laughs> like, all right, buddy, and then the bell rings, so they all go back inside, then after school, they all kind of get together besides Clyde, and except for the kid who had the backpacks, he didn't really want to be a part of this, but basically, right, the subscriber, Calvin, he called together a bunch of kids at a school who were at the recess, and he said, look, I know that Clyde has always been kind of a jerk face, but, like, this is a whole new level, dude. Like, oh my god. Like, he's really getting worse and worse, and if we don't do anything, guys, if we just stand here and we don't do anything, he's only going to get worse. And honestly, like, recess is, like, our only real escape from class, and uh, he's kind of making it suck as well. And if I have to do this five days a week, um, then I want to make sure that these five days a week I have at least one little escape, and that is recess, where Clyde does not mess everything up. So what the group decided was they were going to confront Clyde the next day, tell him basically that he was being a jerk, and that if he doesn't stop, they were basically going to banish him from hanging out with them. They would, like, boycott him, and that, like, if he was going to act that way, he'd have to hang out by himself. And Clyde didn't have a lot of friends. In fact, these kids weren't really his friends, but they were, like, his acquaintances, and his acquaintances were the only thing Clyde had, at least at this school. So the next day at recess, Clyde's kind of, like, sitting out there waiting for the kids, and all the other kids, everyone's kind of late, and Clyde's like, oh, I wonder where they went. I wonder why they're all late. Then all the kids come out in the group and they're like, Clyde, we need to talk. Today's secret word slash phrase is backpack. So if you made it this far into the video, I'd like you to go down in the comment section right now and comment backpack. I just like seeing how many people made it this far into the video. I really appreciate the watch time as that helps the channel a lot. And also, I will do my very best to heart as many comments that have backpack in them as possible, or just literally just comment backpack. You don't have to be creative, it's okay. If anything, that's easier for me to heart. Uh, but I can't heart them all. I do spend like over an hour every single day total on my phone hearting comments, but there's just been so much support recently, which I'm so grateful for. But at the same time, it also means I can't heart everything, so please don't feel bad. But if you want your best chance of getting a heart, farming some hearts, and maybe getting top commenter in the channel, comment backpack down below. Also, dude, today is actually the luckiest day of your life because every single person who leaves a like on today's video will actually receive nothing at all. No, 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 you don't have to get your ears checked. You heard me correct. I am so generous that if you leave a like on the video right now, I will give you nothing, not a zip, nothing. I'm, you're welcome in advance. Leave a like. Yeah. Anyways, Calvin the subscriber and all the kids walk up to Clyde and say, hey Clyde, we gotta talk. And basically what they say to him is, hey dude, like, 
You've always been kind of a jerk. Like, they're not being, okay, to be fair, they're definitely not being nice to him in this confrontation, but they're, they're mad at this point. They're like, we always know you've been kind of a jerk. You're always kind of like abrasive. But recently, you've really just been going over the top. And here's the deal. And they give like the two examples I actually just gave in the video. And they're like, here's the deal, dude. If you keep on acting like this, we're not going to hang out with you. And we're not just like not going to actively hang out with you. We're actually going to bear you from hanging out with you. Like we're going to bar you from entry. We're going to make sure that if you come to us, we're going to walk away. And if you somehow corner us in a room and try to talk to us, we will turn around and not talk to you. So here's the deal, Clyde. We're totally fine with, you know, you hanging out with us if you're not a jerk to us, basically. But in the meantime... We're not going to talk to you until you fix your attitude. And remember, guys, you have to remember, Clyde Clyde had never really been told no in his life. He was one of those kids. Yeah, I guess, like, he literally had received no's and rejections. Like, I'm sure he's failed tests. I'm sure he's been literally told no. But basically, right, he's been told yes to everything. He's never gotten a real no. And being just called out like this, and look, to be fair, it was a bit of a harsh call out, but he definitely deserved it. It, 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 he completely snapped. Like his face gets all bright and red like a big old tomato. And he looks at one of these kids. No, no, he looks at Calvin, right? He looks at Calvin, who basically was the one leading this thing. And Calvin was the one who told him these words basically directly. And he looks at Calvin and poof, spits at him. Oh my God, I spit all over my phone. He, sp he just like spits at him. And he's so mad. And he's so mad. And he turns to another kid in his rage. And he was like, kid. He says his actual name. I don't know. I don't feel like giving more names. He's like, kid, your parents are terrible people. They're disgusting, man, because they're so poor. They don't make any money. You know how much You know how much money my parents make, man? You know how much money my parents make? After spitting on Calvin, calling another, parents, uh, another kid's parents terrible because they're poor, and just basically fuming from the mouth, just spewing and just like getting so mad, he goes over to another kid and just pushes him over, dude. He just goes up to him and just pushes him over and starts storming off. But here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. There is a teacher watching this whole thing go down. Yeah, there's a teacher that was watching the whole thing. She couldn't hear everything, but she did see, you know, that, you know, Clyde spit at some kid, basically, you know, you, you know, just chew another kid out and then push a kid. And pushing the kid was the last straw where she came in. And she was like, Clyde, come with me. And Clyde's like, oh, yeah, 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 right. And, you know, she, she just, like, walks off with Clyde. And then she turns out to the group of kids and is like, I need one or a couple of you to come with me and just explain what happened. Yeah, so it was uh, Calvin and, like, two other kids, right? They decide to, you know, walk with the teacher and Clyde, who's still, like, screaming and, like, crying and bawling and just, like, having a complete, absolute breakdown, right? And they go to the, you know, the teacher's office or the principal's office or wherever, right? And they explain what happens. And Clyde isn't denying anything. Clyde isn't saying, they're all lying, man. They're all lying. At this point, he's just worn out. He's done. He's defeated. He's just, like, so, like, shocked by the fact that they retaliated. He didn't even bother to say anything that wasn't true. So, yeah, uh, when the teacher's like, oh, my God. Because the kids really explain everything Clyde had done at that point. And the teacher's like, oh, my God. And she's like, Clyde, like, I, I'm not going to suspend, like, your punishment isn't for the stuff you said, which was terrible, but you, you basically assaulted a student. You can't do that. You can't push a kid and spit on a kid. You're suspended for a week. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, so just click them. Click one of the vid- why have you clicked in one of the videos yet, dude? Oh in my today's god. today's subscriber story, this spoiled kid thinks that he is better than everyone. And uh, in a pretty funny twist, the spoiled kid gets a massive reality check. And it's, uh, it's pretty hilarious. Enjoy the story. So this subscriber was telling me about this spoiled kid and all the things that he did and eventually what ended up happening to him, which was kind of like pretty much instant karma. But anyways, right, let's, let's give a name to this kid. Uh, let's call this spoiled kid Derek, right? So this was in fifth grade. The subscriber, like this story happened last year. The subscriber is now in sixth grade, but he was in fifth grade last year. And basically, right, so Derek, he was known as the kid who, like, really wasn't, like, he wasn't taught well, man. Like, he would, like, just expect things to be, like, everything to go his way. And if something didn't go his way, then it was rigged and unfair. And also that, like, he deserved an advantage and he deserved more than the average person. I totally understand and, like, I, I, I agree with, like, everyone should at least expect to have the same thing. Like, I mean, like, you know, in, in most cases, like, you know, no one should be treated poorly unless you've done something terrible, right? But this kid just kind of expected that he deserved more than everyone else just because 
he deserved more than everyone else. Like this was literally Derek's reasoning. He was like, I deserve more food at the cafeteria or better food because I'm Derek, right? Like kind of logic like that. So the story went something like this, right? One day, uh, you know, it was this a normal lunch. Uh, the subscriber and his friends and all of his classmates and Derek, they were, you know, they were getting lunch. And for this school, like you could bring your lunch, but most people just, you know, got whatever the food, like the school was giving for food, right? So you'd go and you'd stand in this long line to wait for your turn to get like your meal, correct, right? So anyways, they're waiting in line. And the way that the line worked was it wasn't like, anything like you reserved a seat or anything like that, or it wasn't like you had a special ticket to be X place in line. It was just first come first serve. So if you were there early, you know, you got, you know, you got a pretty good spot in line. If you got there late, then you'd have to wait a little longer. So Derek and his friends, oh no, 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 the subscriber, sorry. The subscriber and his friends are just chilling in line, right? And they got there, you know, they were about mid midway through the line. Um, and because they got there like pretty early, but some kids like stake out just to get a really good spot in line. And after a while, they're waiting in line and the line's moving a little bit slowly today, but they're fine. Like they got plenty of time to eat. And then Derek comes in through the door and it, re remember, it's like 15 minutes after lunch had started. So he's very late. Like he might be one of the last people there. And, you know, they kind of look back because he kind of made a scene by, like, slamming open the doors and, like, he kind of, like, trotted on in. And instead of going to the back of the line, because, like, the subscriber was a little bit confused because, like, instead of going directly to, you know, the back of the line because that's where you go when you come in really late, he kind of, like, walks up to someone and he starts speaking to them. And the person that, they're spe that, he's, that Derek is speaking to kind of looks at him, like, with a bit of a look, like, bro, what? And then they kind of shake their head no to him, and he kind of looks at them, and he, like, makes a grumpy face. But then he goes farther up in line, and he asks another person, right? And they say, they kind of make the same, like, what? And then he's like, oh, he kind of makes, like, a grumpy face, right? So the subscriber and his friends, who are standing decently far up in line at this point, are just really, really confused what's going on, because they're watching this whole thing go down. And eventually, Derek keeps asking people until he gets down to where the subscriber and his friends are. And then they, the subscribers' friends actually hear what Derek has been asking people as Derek asks them, hey, like, do you mind if I cut in front of you? And they just kind of respond like, dude, like, no, like, yeah, yeah, we do mind, actually. You can't just, like, come in here and cut in front of us. Like, why would we do that? Do you have, like, a, a doctor's appointment or, like, a test that you have to take really soon? Is there a reason, right? Is there a reason? Because maybe, right, if you really have to go and you need to get food really soon, we'll definitely consider letting you cut in front of us. It's not that big of a deal, but we're just not gonna let you cut in front of us if you don't have a good reason. So, okay, Derek, what's your reason? And Derek looks at them, he's like, I, I deserve the spot in front of you. And they're just like, hey, yo, what, bro? What are you saying? Derek goes on to say, yeah, because, like, you know, he deserves, like, special treatment when it comes to the line. They're all just looking at him like, what is this kid saying? And they eventually say, no, dude, like, no, if you don't have a good reason, like, you got to go back in the line. And Derek looks at them and is like, oh, you guys don't get it. You don't understand the truth and how things work. And he's being, like, you know, being very weird. And, and he, he eventually goes to the back of the line. After asking a few people in front of, of, of the subscriber and his friends, he gets the message that, uh, well, that no one's just going to give up their spot in line. So the subscriber and his friends were like, okay, that's weird. We know Derek's kind of like a jerk like that, and he's kind of out of reality, but this is really out of touch of reality. And they, for some reason, were kind of under the assumption that this was kind of a one-off event. But little did they know that, you know, uh, Derek would again just try and, like, do something that no one else could do just because he thought he deserved it because he was him. Like, he did it literally the next day. Real quick, if you enjoy Storytime channels, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm really trying to hit 400k before the New Year's. It's going to be a total stretch and it most likely won't happen, so every subscription helps. And with that being said, back to the story. Try to make that as quick as possible, guys. I think I'm getting pretty good at it. So the subscriber and Derek, they both have the same math class. And the very next day after the whole cafeteria incident, as we'll dub what just happened, right, they had a pretty big math test. It was like a unit test. So like they had a lot of quizzes, like one or two every week to just kind of go over new topics. And it didn't really count for that much weight and the questions weren't that hard. But after that, they had a unit test, which is kind of like big cumulative uh, do you actually know what's going on? And it was definitely harder, and it counted for much more of the grade. So the subscriber ended up sitting next to Derek. He just kind of sat down, and Derek, like, came in late, of course. Derek was like, 
three minutes late to class, so everyone had already like started on the first question by the time Derek got there. And and Derek sat down next to him because it was there was like an open seat next to the subscriber and an open seat next to someone else, and there's a seat in the very back, not next to anyone, right? So he sits down next to you know the the subscriber, and the subscriber's kind of just like notices but doesn't really think anything about it because dude, he's focused on the test. He's on the grind. He's been studying, man, and he's trying to get an A and the dude does, the subscriber does ending, end up you know, getting an A. He says that in the Instagram message. By the way, if you want to be featured on the channel with your own stories, f go DM my Instagram. It's in the description. That's how I get these stories. Anyways, right, Derek looks at him and he's just staring at him. And the subscriber's really weirded out. And then Derek says, hey. Uh, and the, the subscriber's just like, dude, what? Like, kind of looks at him like, you can't be talking to me. It's a test. And Derek's like, dude, I need the answers. And, and the subscriber's like, dude, what are you talking about? He's like, bro, I need the answers. And the, the subscriber's like, bro, I, like, I, I studied for this. Like, did you not? He's like, no, of course not. Dude, I need the answers. And, and the subscriber's like, bro, why would I give you the answers, man? We're not even, like, friends like that. And he's like, bro, 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 I just need the answers, bro. And the, the, the subscriber's like, dude, no. Like, I, I studied for this. I'm not just going to give you the answers like that. And the dude's like, bro, I deserve it. And the subscriber, once again, is like, that reminds him of, like, last time in the, like, the, like at, the, at the lunch table or the lunch line. Derek was, once again, like, I deserve it. And the subscriber's like, no, dude. And then he goes back to, like, he goes back to doing his test. And Derek is like, bro, bro, please. Kind of like in a little whisper voice so he doesn't get caught. But, you know, the subscriber's like, no, I'm just not doing this. And Derek's like, fine, have it that way. So two days after the whole math cheating incident and then three days after the lunch line incident, uh, the whole classroom is playing some dodgeball. It was like some special event that they did for like their PE or whatever, right? And uh, Derek is on the other team and the subscriber's on. Okay, Derek and the subscriber are on different teams. That was an awkward way to phrase that, right? So Derek and the subscriber are on a different teams and they're playing dodgeball and, you know, very quick, if you don't know dodgeball, which I think most of you guys do, it's you throw these little foam balls at each other and if you get hit with it, then you're out and if you catch it, the other person is out. Um, so that's the gist of the game. You want to get everybody out. So they're playing dodgeball and, the spo uh, and Derek is very obviously hit. He turns around to pick up a ball and he gets hit in the back, right? Very, very clear. Everyone sees it. And Derek just kind of like looks at them like like deer in a headlight, just plain look. They just kind of looks at them all startled, and this keeps playing. And then one guy on the subscribers team who who hit Derek was like, "Bro, you're out." And Derek's like, "No, I'm not. It, 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 he just didn't hit me." And, and then the the dude's like, "No, it obviously hit you." Even people on Derek's team were like, "Bro, like let's just play, let's just play fair, bro. Like it obviously hit you. Like there's no question about that. Like it clearly hit you. And Derek's like, bro, it did not hit me. It simply did not hit me, bro. Like I don't know what you're saying. Like it just didn't hit. And the guys that are like, no, it, it obviously hit you. And he's like, well, maybe maybe it did hit me. And then everyone's like, what? Like are you admitting to it? But he's like, I should get two lives. And then everyone's like, bro, what do you mean? And he's like, dude, I'm just, uh, I should get two lives. I don't know how else to say it. I just should. And everyone's like, dude, wh wh why should you get two lives? So when everyone says no to Derek, Derek starts getting really angry. And the second that Derek realizes that he's not going to get a second life when everyone else only gets one life, he doesn't get a special leg up, right? When he hears that he doesn't get that, he goes on a rampage and starts grabbing people's, uh, you know, the, the throwing foam balls and starts kicking them over the fence, kicking them out of play. And he's like, if I can't have two lives, no one can play this game. Starts kicking all the balls and everyone's like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, you guys are so unfair. You're not treating me the way I should be treated. And he just, he grabs all the balls, kicks them and storms out. And everyone's like, okay, okay. This is absurd. So every, after Derek storms out, everyone gets together and they start talking about things that have been happening, like that Derek has been doing. And apparently Derek had done a lot of things. The only two things I told you about were just because, right, the subs it happened to the subscriber. So the subscriber had firsthand knowledge. There were a ton of other things that, you know, went down that like the subscriber didn't even know about until that one point. So when that was happening, right, they all kind of came together and realized that Derek was on some kind of weird power trip and that he needed to be grounded, basically, like grounded to reality. Today's secret word is brat, B-R-A-T. Um, uh, yeah, so comment brat if you made it this far into the video. I forgot to do it in the last two videos because I got too into the story, but in the notes that I write down before my story, I wrote down specifically, do the secret comment thing, do not forget. 
Uh, comment section looks lonely when I add, when I forget to ask you guys to do it. So yeah, comment brat down below if you made it this far. And with that being said, let's get back to the story. So all the kids, after they got together and kind of like came to the conclusion that Derek needed to be like given a reality check, they decide that they're tomorrow, that they're going to confront him, list all the things he did, which turned out to be like, they came up with 15 situations in the last month. I just listed three of them. I wasn't given the other like 12 of them, right? They were gonna list the 15 situations and they were gonna say, hey dude, we're gonna exclude you from stuff until you just like, you chill, right? It's not that we dislike you or think that you're a bad person, even though they did dislike him and they thought he was kind of a jerk. They were like, we're gonna give you this opportunity since everyone's in agreement that you're being absurd to calm down and then you can chill with us because probably school isn't gonna be that fun if every all your friends are boycotting you. Rolls around and the subscriber and like half the class go up to Derek as they're leaving the first period class and say, hey, uh, can we can we talk for a second? And Derek's like, what? at first he thinks it's about the dodgeball. He's like, I'm sorry I ruined your stupid dodgeball game. You should have just been fair to me. And then they basically lay down the law. I'm not gonna go through everything they said since a lot of it would just be repeating what I said earlier, but they basically went through every single event and then they gave him the ultimatum. And Derek, instead of being like, oh, like reflecting on the fact that maybe he was being a jerk or anything, he went bright red in the face. And it was like, you guys are the worst. You don't know what you've just done. And he storms away, right? So everyone standing there is like, well, he took that pretty well. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't take it that well, but they were just kind of like, well, I guess, you know, what did we expect? Did we expect him to just come to his senses all of a sudden? That would be a little foolish if we did. Um, so yeah, this wasn't the most shocking thing to happen, but it's a little disappointing. But basically what happens, and they learn this after the fact, Derek goes and tells his mom, and he tells his mom, his, and his mom, who's basically been hyping him up his whole life and not really giving him any reality checks himself, is getting mad about this too. So Derek's mom eventually makes a big like group chat on Facebook with all the other parents of the students in the grade. And she basically says like, your kids are being so mean. They didn't allow my kid to, you know, get special privileges because he's a very special boy. Like this mom was pretty deluded as well. She just was on a different planet too. And after she said this, uh, the subscriber tells me that all the parents, right? Every single parent was like, Nah, <laughs> our kids are in the right on this one. And the mom was like, y you guys don't understand. Like my kid deserves special treatment. He's gonna be like such a, a rich, pow powerful astronaut, astrophysicist, genius, mega mind, CEO of the world type dude later. He deserves this special treatment now. And the parents were all just like, dude, our kids have a point. Like, come on, if this is the way you're reacting, like our kids definitely have a point. So Derek goes to school the next day and telling all the kids on his mommy, right? It just didn't work. And that's normally how he got out of things. That's normally how he like played the system. So Derek was completely defeated. And the next day he went up to them and said, hey guys, like, I'm sorry for the way I acted. Not maybe he wasn't actually sorry, but he just wanted to not be isolated, right? He's like, I'll do better. And they're like, okay, that's all we asked. And I actually don't know if he did better or not. This subscriber never told me. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, literally go ahead and watch another Storytime video. It's the best thing you can do for the channel. If you want to find an easy way to do that, top link is the Storytime playlist. With that being said, bye. You know those kids that when they're in an argument and they're starting to lose, they'll like bring up, oh, uh, my mom does, or my dad is, or like something like that, or my, my dad works for, or my dad's a lawyer, man, or just imagine those kids, right? Imagine that kid. Multiply them by 100 and you have today's spoiled brat. Enjoy the story. So the subscriber who sent in the story, and by the way, you can send in stories too to my Instagram in the description, be featured on the channel, love to see it. Let's just call this kid Jake, right? Anyways, Jake, good kid. And uh, in, in Jake's class, right, in Jake's class, there was a kid who was uh, kind of the the worst kid ever. I'm just kidding, I'm sure that there's someone worse, but uh, he was the spoiled brat kid that I gave a brief description for in the beginning. Let's call this guy Thomas, right, Thomas. Um, and then just there's another girl in the class, and this girl, her name's Emma. Emma's pretty crucial to the story, but that'll become a little bit more apparent in just a second. Anyways, right, so just a little backstory before we go into what Thomas did, his crazy mental breakdown explosion, uh, calling the, you know, my dad on literally everything, and whatever, right, you'll see in a second. But a little bit of a backstory, right? So Jake, the kid who sent in the story, and this girl Emma, they, they pretty obviously had feelings for each other, like they were always like friends, but it was very clear that like, 
they were not about to stay friends for long. They were either going to have a massive explosion and never talk to each other ever again, or they were gonna like date, marry, have six kids, send two kids off to college, start a Roth IRA, start mining Bitcoin as all couples do. It, you know, it was gonna be either or. And it was really looking like Jake was gonna ask her out pretty soon. Like everybody in the class knew this, except Thomas because, uh, you know, Thomas didn't have a lot of friends, so we'll put it that way. But it was kind of, it, it was kind of, Due to him being a the jerk face. Uh, I, I don't know how else to put it, man. I don't know how else to put it. It, it just is what it is. Anyways, right, so, you know, um, Jake, he's in class one day. And, you know, at this point, he kind of has, like, plans to ask Emma out at some point this week, right? He knows he's going to do it. And the thing is, like, everybody knows he's going to do it, too. Even, like, Emma is, like, 98% sure because people who talk to Jake talk to her. You know, secrets, that they don't last long. Secrets are no fun unless you share them with me, not anyone else, just me. But anyways, right, so he was kind of thinking about this in the back of his head, so he was kind of having a good time. It was a fun week, things were looking good. But then, the, you know, this kid Thomas, right? Thomas had a reputation for being that kid who was like, never, no one ever said no, right? He had a lot of, uh, you know, resources and completely abused them, right? He would come in and he would like, if someone had like something new, he would get the new thing plus one or like with more storage or just slightly newer or slightly cooler and while he wouldn't like blatantly like I've talked about kids in the past that have blatantly been like haha my phone is better than yours because it has like it's slightly bigger or has like another camera or something or it's newer Thomas would never be that blatant about it but it was very apparent that whenever someone got something that Thomas the next day would get something that was just a little bit better that it was 100% on purpose like this kid was definitely knew what he's doing so one day when Jake was in class and remember he's at this point kind of planning to ask out Emma Emma knows the whole class knows the teacher knows like I know what this bomb is can I have no idea who these people are but anyways right they kind of know it, and he's chilling in class one day, and he overhears, you know, Thomas. Thomas is going on one of his little rants. Because while Thomas wasn't always blatant about being a jerk, he was, he could be very arrogant at times, such as like a like couple weeks ago, he was like, guys, I'm not even gonna study for this test, man. I'm literally just, I, I'm just born different. And uh, he, Thomas claimed to get 100 on the test, but, you know, the thing is, one of the classmates did a little bit of an investigation by themselves and figured out that Thomas got a 42, um, which, you know, look, these things happen, right? You try and avoid those. Sometimes tests are hard, but you never go around saying that you got a 100. I mean, maybe you're like, oh, dude, I got a C on that test and you actually, like, failed it. I can, I'm fine with that. Like, whatever, dude. But don't go around saying you got a 100 when you got a 42 or something. I don't know. Anyways, right, so Thomas was going on one of his little rants, and Jake decided to overhear what Thomas's rant was. And it was, uh, it was, it was very kind of like awkward yet pretty funny for Jake because uh, Thomas was talking about how Emma was in love with him. And at first Jake was like, bro, what? And Thomas was talking really loudly to this kid and he was like, yeah, Emma, she's in love with me, man. She just can't, she, I, I see her all the time. She's looking over at me with these eyes, eyes of desire. And like, that's a quote, by the way. Like sometimes I like, I make up the lines for what these people are saying, cause I didn't get like a 50 page script, but that one was a quote, right? This was a quote, right? Jake told, or you know, the subscriber who we're calling Jake said that like, this kid actually said like eyes, eyes of like desire or something crazy like that. So at this point, Jake is like, LOL, like what? And yeah, you know, Thomas, the kid, the spoiled brat kid, who you will see have a epic meltdown in just a second. Just give me a second, right? This kid then goes on to say that he's gonna ask out Emma and that there's a 100% chance that she's gonna say yes. And at this point, Jake is like, all right, I'm trying to find the uh, the betting house so I can make a bet on this 100% bet because I, I, I could probably get pretty good, you know, pretty good reward for that, like probably some pretty good odds or the odds would be terrible if it's really 100% and I will definitely make some money on this bet. That's all I'm gonna say. But anyways, right, so Jake was sitting there. He's like, that's funny, haha. -ha. He didn't actually think Thomas was gonna go through with it because Thomas in the past had made a lot of like very, very big claims. He's a he's a he he's that he's that kid who always like says things, but never really does them right. He never really ends up like following through with the stuff. But uh, you know, anyways, they get out of class and they're walking down the hallway, and you know, Jake, the subscriber, he sees Emma, and Emma's like, "Oh, hi, hi, Jake, how's it going?" And uh, Jake is like, um, "Emma, can we talk for a second? Because Jake was thinking to himself, he's like, "You know what? 
I think I should just ask her out now. Like, I don't want her to like feel like to say yes to this kid just because she feels bad and then it's weird. And he said also like, why am I stringing her on? Like, why am I making this longer than it needs to be? So what he did is he did it really private, nothing really crazy. And he just took her side and he's like, hey, you know, we've been having a really, you know, really good time together. Like, I've really enjoyed spending time with you. And he's like, I feel like we're not really friends right now and I want to make it official. And she was like all smiley and happy, man. You know, I really have to make this part up because I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to, you know what, I'm not even gonna go to that, man. One like equals one prayer for, you know, my love life, but whatever, dude. You know, Jake says something really sweet, like, I don't know, your feet are hot, LOL, XD. He says something like really sweet and just something a girl wants to hear, like what I just said. By the way, guys, feel free to use that banger on someone. It will 100% work. I'm as confident that it's gonna work that I am as confident that this kid's not gonna have a complete mental breakdown. And by mental breakdown, I mean Thomas having a complete rage. But anyways, right? But that's a joke. Don't actually use that line. I'm not, I'm not liable if you get rejected or punched in the face. Don't actually use that line, guys. Anyways, right, so, you know, Jake, you know, he asks out Emma. And guess what? Emma said yes. Not a surprise. Not a surprise at all. But anyways, right, so, you know, they're walking out and, you know, good news. You know, you know, Jake just asked out Emma. She said yes. He's having a good time. People are like, you know, Emma goes up to her group of friends and starts telling them, like, ooh. You know, kind of like, you know, it kind of fun, like high school drama stuff like that. Like, oh, yay, congrats, guys, whatever. Um, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Thomas is not aware of this fact. I mean, first of all, she'd never say yes to Thomas because he's kind of a jerk. But Thomas, Thomas, good guy, Tom, actually not, not, not good guy, but you know, Thomas, right? He's not aware of this. Anyways, right, so you get out to the hall, and uh, Jake is somewhere, like, Jake is kind of near, like, he's, he's in the hallway, because it's, like, in between classes or whatever, or it's, like, during a free, whatever, I don't know exactly the context, but for some reason, a bunch of kids were just, like, chilling somewhere. Maybe it's the hall, maybe it's out of, like, recess, maybe it's a common area. Either way, imagine a place where all these kids are at, and Thomas is there, and he sees Emma, and he's like, hey, Emma, can I talk to you for a second? And here's the thing, right? Emma was totally aware, like when Jake like called her aside, she knew exactly what was happening because they've been kind of like talking for a week like that, you know, like they, they had kind of been like that for a while. Either way, right, so when Thomas calls Emma aside, she had no idea what to expect. She had never talked to this kid before. Yeah, the whole like Thomas telling people that she was, she was in love with him. That, now that just wasn't, that just wasn't true, man. <laughs> that just was not true. Anyways, right, so Thomas, he calls Emma aside, and but he calls her aside, not really. Like Jake, like actually brought her to like a different place. Um, Thomas did this in front of actually everyone. He went up to her and he's like, "Hey," and she's like, "Uh, what's up?" And, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, "You've been totally looking at me recently with these like these eyes." And she's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter." Will you be my girlfriend? And he just kind of like looks at her with like these eyes. He's like, huh? Will you? What do you say? What do you say? And she's like, she, oh, okay, here's the thing. She wouldn't have said yes anyways, but she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And at this point, his face drops. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm actually, I'm actually just got a relationship with someone. And he's like, who? Yeah, yeah. And Emma's like, yeah, you know, you know, Jake. And he's like, what? And she's like, yeah, I know Jake just asked me out and we're, you know, we, we just got together like literally today. Like, I, I'm sorry, like I, I just got into a relationship. Obviously she's using this as a cop out cause she was gonna say no anyways. So this is like the nicest way she can say no. But, and, and, and then the, the, the thing is though, Thomas, Thomas doesn't take this well. The way that Thomas perceived this whole thing going down was that no, 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 no. She didn't say no because like he was undateable or because she didn't want to, she said no because she really wanted to. She wanted him, but she simply couldn't because she was stuck in a relationship with Jake. And this made Thomas so mad. And you could see his face get so red and he took his little hand and he like balled it up in a fist and he was like, where is Thomas? I'm really bad at this whole name thing. Of course, Thomas didn't say, where is Thomas? Thomas said, where is Jake? And Jake like just happened to like walk in like just wherever they were, hallway, room, whatever, or just gathering place. He just happened to like walk in as that was happening and he looks up and he sees like Emma, his girlfriend of like 
25 minutes at this point, right? And then, like, Thomas, the kid that, like, he knew that was, like, kind of, like, weird and kind of, like, out of this, like, just lived in a different planet, looking at him with this, like, face of rage. And uh, Jake was just like, oh, boy. Uh, speaking of rage, uh, today's keyword or special or secret phrase or whatever you want to call it is rage. So yeah, if you made it this far into the video, comment rage down below. I'll be hearting as many of those comments as I see. I obviously can't get to them all, but I will do my very best to try and heart as many as I can. So if you want to farm some hearts on the channel, maybe get top commenter. Best shot of that happening is by commenting rage down below. Also, every once in a while, I'll shout out a channel member who leaves a comment on the video. So yeah, on screen, thank you very much. You guys can also become a channel member by hitting the join button, but honestly, you guys don't have to do that. I just appreciate you watching this far. I really do. And also, to show you my gratitude, every single person who leaves a like on today's video, just dropping a like on the video, will receive nothing. I know you're probably just like, if you're standing up, you fell down. If you're sitting in a seat, you literally collapsed out of your seat. It's a fantastic deal. Leaving a like in the video and you get nothing? I'm going to leave a like right now. Anyways, right, so where we left off was uh, Thomas just got rejected by Emma. And in, Emma, in, in Thomas's mind, it is Jake's fault. Emma actually is still in love with him, but uh, it, it's all because of Jake. He can't have her because of Jake. He like goes up to Jake and he's like, bro. And, and Jake's like, what's up, dude? He's like, bro, bro, do you want to fight? <laughs> I love it when people are just like, do, do you want to fight, man? Like, no, N no one wants to fight. No one's going to box you. You're not KSI and Logan Paul. No one's going to watch it. Just why, dude? Like, whatever, right, tangent. He's like, do, do you want to fight, bro? And Jake's like, dude, what? And, and, and then Thomas is like, yo, Emma rejected me because of you. Uh, and Jake's like, dude, she rejected you because you're a jerk. Hey, Jake had no filter, right? Uh, like, good kid, but, like, no filter. He's like... You're always annoying, you're always bragging about stuff, you're always full of it, like, even if she wasn't with me, like, unlucky to you, but even if she wasn't with me, she would have said no. And at this point, Thomas just goes berserk. And he just, like, he just looks at Jake and he's like, you know, you know what my dad does? And at this point, Jake is like, dude, I do not care. And Thomas is like, no, he is a very good lawyer and he's gonna sue you, dude. And Jake is just looking at him, just completely just flabbergasted. Just like, did this kid just say that his dad is actually going to sue me because my girlfriend denied his, like, his love application? What the fu- what? Like, at this point, he th kind of thought it was a joke, but no, this- he looked at this kid, this Thomas, he could see it in this kid's Thomas's eyes, right? This was no joke. This kid was mad, and he was like, yeah, my, my, my dad's gonna sue you, man. He's gonna sue you. You're gonna have nothing left. Your mom's gonna have nothing left. Your dad's gonna have nothing left. Your sister's gonna have nothing left. Your dog's gonna have nothing left. And then you're, you're gonna collapse and die of a heart attack out of pain and sadness and whatever. And then your grave is gonna have nothing left. He was just going off and off and off. And Jake is like, okay. And, he, and that made Thomas so mad. He was like, this will be the last of it, Jake. And he just like storms off. And at this point, the whole class is just like, what the f- what just- what? And Emma's just like, okay. And, and Jake's like, you know what? Do you want to go on our first date tonight? Do you want to get out of here? It was like close to the end of school anyways. And Emma's like, yeah, I think I will. Subscribe if you haven't already and now go click on another video. There's some on screen. Click. Dude, why have you not clicked? Today we have a story time about probably the most spoiled brat of all time that has basically a massive breakdown and uh, actually threatens to uh, buy a kid and have his dad sue him and attack it. It was it was pretty crazy. So yeah, sit back, relax, grab a you know a, I don't know a thing of popcorn, cup of coffee, and uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. We're gonna call the subscriber. We're gonna call this guy Tom, right? So anyways. Tom and all of his friends, you know, it, it, it's summertime. It's summer vacation, man. I know I'm posting this in January, so it's a little bit far away from that. So I apologize for reminding you of something that's pretty cool that's pretty far away. 
But anyways, right, so Tom and all of his friends, you know, they're excited for summer vacation. It, it's just started. And every summer, they had this kind of annual thing that they would do. And it's kind of like the big hype thing that everyone would do. It, it, it was a massive, like, tag event tournament type thing where every kid in the neighborhood, or at least most of them, you know, the ones that they were at least friends with or friendly with, they would all come together. They'd all play. And it was always, like, a really fun time. And, like, the winner got something special or wouldn't have to, like, pay for ice cream or something when they all went out. So it was a pretty cool deal, right? Pretty cool deal. And uh, anyways, right, so the event happens. It's time. It is time for the, you know, the whole official tag thing. And let me introduce another kid into the whole thing. Uh, let's call this kid Ben. And Ben, Ben's dad kind of ran the town in a sense. Ben's dad, like, owned the ice cream shop. He didn't work at it, but he owned the ice cream shop. He owned, like, the movie theater. He had, like, steaks and different things or whatever, right? And uh, Ben definitely knew about this, and he definitely kind of acted as if this was the case. Like, this guy, Ben, would legitimately, you know, he would be, like, he he, he never, like, he never had, like, a crazy breakdown like he did in today's story and actually went full mask off. But, like, he would kind of act as if, you you know, he knew his dad basically owned and ran the town, right? So anyways, right, so over the it's finally the big tag tournament or whatever and you know tom's a pretty fast kid tom knows tom's pretty athletic he know he's he knows he's gonna be at least pretty good at this right so anyways right so tom he's going about he's going around he's going about this and the game starts and tom is you know he's somehow he's he's tagged as it right basically there's one kid who is like designated as it the kid who won last year which tom actually won last year which he thought was pretty sweet he didn't have to pay for like ice cream or movies or stuff uh, he was designated as the first it person, and the way the game worked was like it was like the zombie version of tag. So like, as more people got tagged, they would also become it as well, and so it got subsequently harder and harder and harder to actually win. And uh, you know they would play for I think like an hour or something per day, and they would just like cap it at cap it off at an hour per day, then come back the next day and you know play another round or whatever until there was only one person left. And there was a ton of kids, and they could basically go anywhere. It, it was it was a really fun event. So anyways, Tom starts off as the one who's it because he won last time. And Tom's a really fast kid. So within no time, like, there's already two, three, four people that get tagged, four, you know, people that are out. And uh, Ben, who's kind of like the, you know, the entitled kid, right? He's not the fastest man on planet Earth. He's not, like, the most speedy guy ever. So basically, right, Ben, you know, he's, you know, he's running around. He's hiding. It's also hiding as a decent strategy, especially especially as more and more people become it. It kind of, at some point, it's like you just can't outrun 50 people, especially if they're coming in all different directions. So, you know, Ben finds this hiding spot and it's like behind this bush in this, in this house. However, the thing was, this was a very classic hiding spot. And the thing about hiding spots, right, is if they're classic or if they're well-known, that's a very bad sign because that means everyone knows about it. So you don't want to be in a classic hiding spot, bro. Like, that that's that's pretty bad if anything right you know you want to find a new hiding spot that no one has ever done because remember this event has gone on for many years uh so anyways right ben you know what he does is he's going around he got some people he's taking down very easy obvious targets because he's pretty fast and now he's like okay let me just check hiding spots let me just go through the standard hiding spots so he goes to one house which is like behind that house is a classic place he checks inside a tree house which was a classic place before and then he goes to this house and he goes into the he looks behind the bushes where you know ben was obviously hiding because it was like a very classic hiding spot and it actually won a kid the whole event like a couple years back so anyways right you know he goes there he sees ben and he starts to like go towards him and ben starts running away because ben's like oh shoot like he found me and ben is not the fastest man ever and tom is pretty fast so you know tom is actually you know with like two other people that were also it because he also tagged them and when tom went up and like tagged ben or whatever right ben basically said just kept running and tom's like hey man i got you and ben like stops for a second and says you didn't get me like that, that you didn't get me man like no you didn't and the two other kids were like bro like bro ben it was so clear it was so like it was so blatant that he got you like don't don't even don't even try with that. And Ben starts getting mad, right? He's like, "No, you you're cheating. You're cheating." And he's like, yeah. and then he starts getting angrier and angrier. And Tom's like, "Dude, like I obviously got you. Like you're wasted. Like there's only like 30 minutes left of this round. Like 
come with us. Like, you're it. Help us tag people. And Ben's like, he starts to tear up a little bit. He's like, no, dude. You didn't get me, man. You didn't get me at this point. You know, Ben's like, or Tom's like, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. Like, chill out. Bro, chill out. It's not, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. Like, bro, first of all, like, in his head, he was like, dude, why do you even want, like, the free ice cream or whatever? Like, dude, you can obviously pay for it. He basically had, like, an unlimited credit card or whatever. He's like, dude, why, why do you even want that, man? Like, you're not going to benefit anything from that. And, and Ben's just like, dude, it's not fair. You didn't get me. You didn't get me, man. He's like, you don't know what I can do. You don't know what I'm capable of. And here's the thing. Ben had never really had a massive breakdown like this, being super angry or whatever. So everyone kind of knew him as kind of like the entitled kid, like the spoiled kid. But they didn't like, he never like went like full mask off. He never went crazy on them, right? And then he starts like, he's like, you know, you, you know, my dad runs the town. You, you don't want to mess with me. And, and at this point, like, Tom's like, dude, come on, we're wasting time. He's like, you don't understand. Like, I could buy the school. I could, I, I, my dad, my dad could buy you and you could do whatever. You'd have to do whatever I said. And at this point, Tom's like, dude, what the fuck? Like, uh, that, that's, that's really illegal. What? And, and the men, Ben's like, my, my dad's going to sue you for cheating. At this point, Tom is just kind of like laughing. He's like, okay, so first you threaten that your dad is going to actually buy me, and then he's going to actually sue me for cheating in a fun tag game? Like, dude, do you have any idea how the court systems work, bro? So Ben looks at him and says, you have one, you have one chance left, Tom. You have one chance left to, to admit you're cheating and let me go. And, and, and Tom's like, dude, nope. Like, the two kids with me right now, they also saw that you were obviously cheating. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, no, it's just not happening. And then Ben's like, you'll regret this, and runs off. So anyways, right, Tom doesn't think anything of it. He thinks, like, this kid just had, like, a break. He's not going to tell anyone really about this because he's like, you know what? This kid isn't the worst guy ever. He probably just, like, had a, a rough day and just, yeah, this is very bad. Like, he shouldn't have had, like, a breakdown like this. But still, whatever. And he tells the other guys, let's just keep this between us. I don't want to start any unnecessary drama. And let me just say that, like, yeah, um, he wasn't about to be the one to start anything, but he was about to definitely get into something. So anyways, right, you know, Ben, he finds, like, two or three more people, and there's probably, like, 15 people left, and then, you know, they all have, like, Ben has this timer on his phone, and he sends a message out to, like, this group chat that they're all in, saying, all right, first hour is up, so first day is done, congratulations to everyone who's not been caught yet, uh, meet here at whatever, like, tomorrow at 2 p.m. sharp or whatever, um, you know, anyone who's late will be disqualified, and you'll turn into, like, an it person as well, and he also said there's, like, six other people that have been, you know, it, like, had been gotten, or whatever and he included you know ben in that list but when he got back home right ben's mom came downstairs and was like tom like can we talk for a second and ben was a little con or shoot i messed it up yeah no tom's mom you know tom came downstairs and tom's mom's like tom can we can we talk for a second tom was a little confused because he was like uh like okay like normally this is when something bad happens and tom's mom's like uh i got a really weird phone call and tom is starting just starting to put the puzzle pieces together he's like no way, dude. And uh, Tom's mom explains that Ben's dad called her and explained that, you know, Ben was very upset. He came back very upset today saying that, you know, Tom cheated really hard and robbed him of a chance to have fun. And Tom, Ben's dad told Tom's mom that basically, right, you know how he kind of like owns everything in the, uh, in the town? He said, you know, you guys, you know, until Tom explains to like everyone, uh, that, you know, he cheated and lets my son Ben play again, you guys will not be allowed in the, you know, the ice cream shop or the, or the movie theater. And when Tom heard this, he was like, what? Like, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. Because, you know, it was like kind of hitting on him like, damn, like that's really bad too. Because the thing is like his friends would always like, it, it, it was like the spot, like getting ice cream and going to the movies was like the other thing that they did when they weren't like playing like, I don't know, video games or tag or whatever over the summer. So he's like, oh my God, like that really sucks. Like I really like that. But mom, you have to understand I didn't cheat. And she's like, you know, like Tom, I believe you. Like, obviously this is crazy. And she's like, I, I don't know what to do. So what Tom does next is he gets in contact with everyone playing the game, minus Ben, and explains what happens. And also the two kids that were it with Tom when they saw, you know, Tom obviously get Ben, chimed in as well to say that, you know, Tom obviously got Ben and they saw it very clearly. But when he explained it to everyone, everyone was like, what? Like, this is the craziest thing ever, dude. 
So speaking of being banned from the ice cream shop, uh, today's word is ice cream, so comment ice cream down below, and I'll try and hard as many as I can. I I'm very busy over the next couple days, like incredibly busy, so the fact that I'm getting two videos out is I'm pretty proud of, but I'm going to hard as many comments as I can, but please don't take it personally if I don't get to your comment. And also, uh, leave a like on today's video right now to receive absolutely nothing. I know I'm not even, this is, this is not a joke, guys. Like, I'm legitimately, like, you'll receive nothing if you leave a like, and if you want to do, I, my generosity has no bounds because if you don't want to receive just one nothing but you want to receive two nothings go down while you're leaving a like on the video and turn on those beautiful beautiful notifications and uh, yeah you'll actually receive nothing dude not even joking so what ends up happening next is you know um tom's mom tom's mom is pretty cool and she comes up with a pretty good plan so what she ends up doing is tom's mom contacts all the other parents of all the other kids that were playing with Tom minus Ben, right? So obviously Ben's dad is not involved in this. Tom's mom explains everything, and all the parents agree that that is insane and kind of an abuse of power. And what they're thinking right now is, if this is like, we can't let this happen, because if we let this be like, a, if we allow this precedent to occur, or like, if we allow this to be a thing that can happen once, what's stopping, like, you know, Ben's dad from having that, like, you know, basically banning someone whenever they do something that, you know, he's not a fan of. Like, that's a really powerful weapon. Like, we can't let him use that against him. So all the parents come together, and what they decide to do is they're going to send Ben's dad an email saying, like, it doesn't, like, one, you know, Tom didn't cheat, but it doesn't even matter if Tom cheated or not. Like, the fact that, you know, you're going to, like, ban someone, like, because, like, their kids got a disagreement from using, you know, the ice cream or movie theater and it is insane. Basically telling him that they're not going to go to his ice cream shop and they're not going to go to the, his movie theater. And they're going to also come together and tell all their friends that live in the town to not go until he, you know, drops this claim and apologizes, another thing, and also says that he'll never do it again. And, uh, yeah, they sent a, a strongly worded email with quite a lot of power behind it. And the thing was, it wasn't the largest town ever. They weren't in a massive city. So, you know, you know, all the kids that were playing, you know, all their parents kind of knew everyone else in the town, basically. So by doing this and if successfully, they would probably reduce traffic and customers to, um, you know, Ben's parents' uh, restaurant and business or whatever by probably like 80, 90 percent. So it was a pretty, pretty... Pretty powerful claim. Anyways, right, you know, that night, that night of the whole thing going down, the parents come together and they send that message to Tom's dad. And they all, they basically all sign it and it's like proof that they're not bluffing, right? And so the next day a tag happens and Ben is not invited back because basically it's like a text email, a text list saying where the new tag location will be because they kind of move it around. And, you know, ben, I don't think Ben was going to show up anyways because of the whole thing going down, but Ben was definitely not invited. But, you know, the whole tag thing, you know, it ends after two days and there's a new winner or whatever. But there's no word back from, you know, from Ben's dad. And everyone's getting a little worried that he's going to blow them off and go through with it and then have all this massive power. But eventually, right, three days after the email sent out, you know, Tom's mom calls him down. She's like, Tom, come down here. We got a response. Comes down. You know, Tom goes to, like, where his mom is. And his mom's at the computer, looks at the e uh, at the computer. And on the computer is Tom uh, Tom's mom's email, right? And they open up the email, and there's a message from Ben's dad, basically formally apologizing, saying that, you know, he was just upset because his son was upset, and that it's not okay that what he said, and that, you know, everyone, you know, that everyone in the email basically says, you know, you show this email to someone at the counter, and you get one scoop free on me. And uh, Tom was like, a free scoop of ice cream? Let's go, baby! Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. If you binge watch my videos, I'll literally love you forever. No probably joke. Probably the no most spoiled slash entitled girl on planet Earth. And But at the end, uh, she gets owned pretty hard, and uh, it's pretty satisfying. It's, it's a good moment of, like, that beautiful, beautiful karma, right? Karma's real man, and this story is proof. So sit back, relax, grab something to drink, and enjoy. Preferably what you're drinking is, like, Water, stay hydrated, man. Hydrate or dehydrate, baby, let's go. Anyways, right, so the subscriber who sent in today's story, let's just call this guy Mike, right? Anyway, so Mike, Mike's a good kid. Um, uh, and anyways, in this class, you know, Mike has a, there's this girl in this class, and this girl, she's kind of like the spoiled girl, and we're gonna call, we're gonna give her a name too. Let's call her Rachel, right? All right, so Mike and Rachel. Anyways, there's a pretty big test coming up, and this class isn't like super easy. This isn't a class you can kind of goof around it and do well in. This is definitely a class where you need to be grinding, man. You need, you need to be on top of your game. You need to be like 100% dialed. Okay, it, okay, maybe not 100% dialed in, but like it's a hard class. 
class. You can't be just winging it. This is not a wingable class. But anyways, right, so, you know, Mike is sitting there and, you know, Rachel's in his class and there's a pretty big test coming up and then Rachel kind of turns to everyone and is just like, I don't need to study for this. And Mike's just like, dude, no, you need to study for this. Like, I don't care who you are. And Rachel was like, uh, nope. I am incredibly smart. Even my daddy says so. And at this point, Mike's just like, bruh, like, bro, like, you, you cannot be serious, dude. Like, oh my, like, w uh, okay, like, okay, man, okay, cool, that's cool, whatever, right? But anyways, right, uh, yeah, she just goes on to say, yes, naturally, I'm just born incredibly smart, and I am just, I'm just at a different level of intellect, and uh, my father says so. He says, oh, you're so smart, and honestly, I don't think I need to study for this. I believe I can figure it all out. I can comprehend all the information on the day of the test. At this point, Mike, who's like, Mike's a decently smart guy, right? This guy's no slacker. He puts in the effort. He puts in the work. He's quick on his feet. He's definitely put in the hours to do well in this class. He's just looking at her like, what planet does this girl live on, dude? Like, honestly, what planet does this girl live on? And yeah, she keeps going off. And there's like, it's not just Mike, right? There's other kids that she's talking to about like how smart she is, man. And at this point, everyone's just like, oh my God, are you delusional, dude? Like this was the first major test. So the, there wasn't really any other assessment that would gauge how well you do in the class before this one. And they really didn't know if this, because maybe look, there's a slight chance this girl's actually pretty smart, a slight chance. However, dude, let's be honest. If you're like actually that smart, you're not going to be going around telling people, oh my God, I'm so smart and the proof I have of it is my daddy says I'm smart. Like, that's that's just not proof you're gonna... You're not... You're, dude, you're just not gonna be doing that, man. It's just not something you're gonna be doing. But anyways, right, so, you know, the, the you know, Mike goes back home. He studies for the test like a good guy, like a good kid, you know. Everyone else in that class was kind of like... It was kind of like a higher-up class, so to be fair, it wasn't like anyone could get in. So obviously, Rachel, they thought at least, probably had some qualifications. In retrospect, and like, obviously, with what happened... Um, it it kind of seems like that Rachel's parents kind of stepped in and said, my daughter should be in the advanced class. Why are you putting her in the D-cell class or whatever? And dude, here's the thing. I've been in advanced math. I've been in D-cell math. I've been in regular math. No disrespect if you're in any of those maths, right? I've literally been in every single one. But yeah, so I, the, while this isn't confirmed, Mike is pretty sure that like her parents definitely stepped in and were like, my daughter definitely deserves to be in the higher class. Like, oh, well, why are you putting her in the lower class? She does. She has to be in the highest class, whatever, because she's very smart and very intelligent, and we're going to make a big muck if you don't do it. And at this point, right, the school's like, okay, like, I mean, our, you know, our, our math tutors or teachers have come together and came to, like, the best placement for your daughter, but okay, like, sure, we'll do it okay, like, like, fine, whatever, like, dig your own grave, we don't care, like, okay, if you're gonna make a big stink out of it, like, okay, fine, like, have your daughter fail, what, they didn't say that, but they're like, okay, whatever, like, it's against our best judgment, and we suggest otherwise, because of, you know, the people we pay thousands of dollars a year who have, like, you know, specialized in this stuff, say otherwise, but okay, Mr. Whatever, okay. For that reason, right, Rachel has already got this feeling like that she's special, man, that she's smart, that she's something else, right? That she's just like, she's built different. She's in, she's in the accelerated math, which I mean, they're all in the accelerated math, but she's in the accelerated math, man. And her dad says that she's smart. So for some reason, she's like telling people, I don't need to study. So yeah, so Mike and everyone else in the class ends up studying for this massive exam, and she does not. And you come in on the day of the exam, and Mike sits down, and she's sitting there. And let me just say that she's looking a little bit sweaty. She's looking a little bit like, oh my god, what have I... She's looking a little bit regretful that she didn't actually, and she's like, a little bit of, like, a little bit of panic is seeping through her facade, right? A little bit of panic. Just a tad, though. Nothing too crazy. And the test is really hard. But the thing is, right, Mike feels like, wow, this is pretty hard, and I studied a lot for this. Mike ends up feeling pretty good about the test, and, you know, when he gets it back in a couple days, which, or, you know, that's going to be a pretty critical part of the story, but n not Mike's results. It's Rachel's results that start a huge chain reaction meltdown or whatever. Anyways, right, Mike ends up doing pretty decent on the test, but he felt like it was pretty hard, and he was thinking to himself during the test, he's like, if I feel like this is hard, and I studied for a long time, and I'm I'm a decently smart kid, like, you know when you're a decently smart kid, right? And, and Mike's just like, if I studied really hard, and this feels really hard, like, 
Rachel screwed, dude. Like, there was no chance. A little part of him was like, maybe she's actually a super genius, even though I can almost guarantee 100% if you're a super genius man, you're not going around telling people that you're a super genius. That's just not the case, bro. But anyways, right, you know, uh, he's just like, wow, yeah, Rachel... Yeah, she's fu she she's screwed. Oh my god, I almost lost monetization for a second. So anyways, right, while Mike is doing the test, he kind of looks up at uh, Rachel, and she has, like, nothing down on the paper. She legitimately has nothing down on the... Like, because you're given a piece of... It was, like, you're given a piece of scrap paper to, like, do some work, and, like, you have to, like, fill in, like, your s step process or whatever. Nothing was filled out. And it was, like, th two-thirds of the way through the test. She was just staring at it blankly, and Mike was like, all right, well... Maybe she's doing all the calculations in her head and waiting to put the answers to last minute. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty unlikely. Um, and Mike also realized that, you know, that's, that's pretty unlikely, dude. So, yeah, he kind of was like, oh, well, she failed that. Well, that's not a total shocker. That's not a total surprise. But anyways, right, Mike finishes his test. He walks up and he walks past Rachel. Rachel is, like, legitimately nothing down on the piece of paper. He wasn't even, like, seeing it weirdly or there wasn't, like, a lighting thing that like prevented him from seeing it no she legitimately had nothing on the paper so after going on a tangent about how incredibly genius she is and how she doesn't need to smart she doesn't need to smart she doesn't need to study because she's smart she basically has written nothing down but anyways right right mike leaves because he hands in the work he's done and you know a couple days later they're in class again and the teacher has finally graded the test so when the you know when the, the day comes and she actually grades the test and she starts handing stuff back right mike gets the test back he gets like he gets like an 80 or something, which in some classes, 80 is not good, but in like, this was like a math class or something in a pretty difficult one, but like an 80 in a, like a difficult math class is not bad at all, especially in a very hard test. But anyways, right, you know, Mike looks up and, you know, Rachel's not gotten her test back yet, and the teacher's walking around handing tests, and she's basically putting them on a lot of people's desks face up, because like, you know, I don't know, that's just how she was doing it. But when she got to Rachel's, right, she just, she very purposely flipped the paper around so that the paper would be down, face down. So at that point, right, Mike knew, yep, 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 she failed. She absolutely bombed that thing. Like, there's no chance. And Mike, is, Mike, I, I don't know why I'm calling, calling him Michael. Mike, I, I mean, you know who I'm talking about. But Mike, right, he's watching Rachel, and Rachel flips the piece of paper around. She looks at it, and her eyes just go wide, dude. Mike is just watching as Rachel is comprehending the fact that she probably mega bombed this test after telling everyone that she's a super genius and super smart, right? So they're okay. At this point, Rachel has a couple ways of going about this. Plays it super cool, goes to the teacher after class. Uh, if anyone asks, she did well. If anyone wants to see her test, right, you know, she just doesn't show it to them. Uh, another way she could, she could go about it, which is potentially the way that she went about it, is have a massive psychotic meltdown claiming that she'll actually sue the teacher. I'm going to let you guys think for a second on which one she did. Uh, comment A or B in the comment section down below. But yeah, anyways, let's hop right into it. If you chose B, then you're a genius, or you just, you know, knew how these stories would go. Anyways, right, um, so, you know, she raises her hand, and she looks up, and she says, Teacher, teacher! There must be a mistake. Please come over here. And the teacher, right, who knows that she absolutely bombed the thing and knows that there was no mistake because dude probably double-checked her work, like double-checked to make sure that she actually completely failed because you wouldn't want to fail someone that bad on a little mistake, right, or on multiple mistakes. So the teacher comes over and says, I'm pretty sure there's no mistake, but what's up? Like, w w what's the mistake? Because, like, sometimes there might be a mistake because, like, you know, sometimes teachers make mistakes. For example, a teacher made a mistake on my thing, like, well, last semester, right? And I pointed out very specifically and very, you know, nicely, cordially, everyone makes mistakes. And they were like, yeah, sure, I can fix that. My bad, right? But when you come over, ha what she did instead, instead, Rachel had the teacher come over, and she's like, teacher, here's the mistake, and points to the grade. Nothing that the teacher graded incorrectly, but the grade itself. And the teacher looks at her and says, sorry, Rachel. There's nothing wrong with that. That's your grade. And Rachel just looks at this teacher blankly for a second. Just looking at this teacher very blankly for a second. And then she gets all mad. And she looks at the teacher and just like stands up and says, My dad is going to sue you. And at this point, right, Mike is just like, What the f- What? And the whole class is just like speechless. Their mouths are open. They're just like, what? What did this what did this girl just say? And she's like, "Yeah, 
My dad's gonna sue you. Speaking of teachers getting threatened to be sued by, uh, you know, psycho spoiled girls, uh, today's word is teacher. So if you made it this far into the video, comment teacher down below. I try and heart as many of the people in the comment section who say the secret word. Uh, I can't heart them all, obviously. I have to sleep and do work. I'm at school right now, in college currently. Uh, but I really do my best to try and heart as many of them as I can to say thank you guys so much for, you know, watching and giving me watch time. I do, I do appreciate you a lot. Also today, today is your lucky day, man, because for every single person who leaves a like on today's video, yeah, simply leaving a like, you will actually receive nothing right in front of you. I'm not even kidding, dude. Leave a like in this video, and within five minutes, nothing will appear in front of you. And I'm giving you a very special limited time offer. If you also, while you are down there leaving a like, turn on notifications to the channel, you will receive two nothings in front of you when you leave a like and turn on notifs. So crazy. I'm super generous. Back to the story. Anyways, right, so this teacher is just looking at her, like, kind of in disbelief that the fact that Rachel, his student, legitimately just threatened that her dad would sue this guy just because she got a bad grade on a test, right? Like, this girl was definitely living in a different planet, which, while Mike was sitting there completely shocked, he wasn't, like, it wasn't the most shocking thing ever because, obviously, this girl was living in a completely different planet by her conversation with him earlier about how she's actually a super genius and, you know, doesn't have to study for anything, and proof is because dad said so, so, like, yeah. But anyways, right, so the teacher looks at her and is like, sue me for what? Like, she, he le legitimately just, like, stood up as well, matched her body language, was like, yeah, sue me for what, buddy? She didn't say buddy, but, like, that was, like, the vibe, right? And she's just so taken aback, because normally the teachers are, like, because, like, I don't know, her dad was, like, kind of a powerful dude or whatever, like, super smart lawyer man that had lots of money or whatever. Obviously not a justification for being a jerk, but at the same time, like, no one really wanted to mess with him. Um, but, yeah, uh, this was the first time she'd ever been confronted like this, so she was like, oh, uh, well, uh... He's gonna sue you, man. Like, she she just went back, like, at for sue. And, and, and then the teacher was like, all right, yeah, sure, send it. Like, have him sue me. And the whole class is like, yo. Because, like, this is the first time a teacher's actually stood up to this girl. I kind of forgot to say earlier, but, like, Rachel was kind of notorious, a little notorious for, like, basically people bending to every whim and command that she had. And, uh, no, she was, she just, like, was a, all right, then I'll, I'll call my dad. And everyone's like, oh, like, okay, it's going down. All right, I see how it is, right? And so she, you know, she pulls out her phone, calls up her dad and says, dad, this teacher failed me on purpose. And her dad's like, what? Like, well, well what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, he failed me on purpose. And the teacher's like, may I speak to your father? And she's like, no. And, and she's like, dad, you got to sue him. And she's, and, and the dad's like, sweetie, uh, of, co of course I'll help you out, but sue him for what on what legal grounds that she said i don't know for being mean at this point right you, you could hear the dad because he was on speakerphone the dad was like all right sweetie let's let's just deal with this later and, and she like quickly turns off the phone and was like you'll regret this and legitimately storm grabs her bag storms out of class mike is just sitting there like uh, uh okay man like <laughs> What the fuck? And the teacher just kind of like addresses the class like, well, that's not exactly how I thought, you know, this Tuesday would be going. And everyone kind of like breaks out in laughter because it was like it was very nervous tension. So they were like, OK, thank God, like a little joke here or there. And uh, yeah, so Rachel didn't come to the class for a couple days, but then she came in and like Mike noticed her go up to the teacher and apparently like she apologized or whatever and said that, you know, she's sorry for failing the test and also the outburst and everything. And she sat down and she really didn't talk to anyone for weeks at that point. She was just very dialed in and super embarrassed, obviously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen. Click it. Click it. Click it or you suck. I Today we get a story time of probably the most spoiled slash entitled girl ever getting a massive reality check and basically laughed at by everyone. And it's it's pretty funny, but it's also pretty just like astonishing that someone could actually believe what she believed. So anyways, yeah, sit back, relax, grab a, you know, a thing of popcorn, cup of coffee, thing of apple juice, thing of orange juice, your your Bitcoin miner, your, your Tezo staker, your your US Treasury notes, I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't know, dude. Anyways, enjoy the story. Anyway, so the subscriber who sent in the story, we're going to call him Ben Jamin. I'm not going to use Ben for like the 500th time, don't worry. That's for next video. We're calling him Benjamin, Benjamin, right? So uh, if you want to send in a story too, 
Instagram in the description. That's where I get these stories. And you can maybe be on the channel. But anyways, right, so Benjamin was telling me about this time where there's this new girl and her name was uh, Michelle, right? Let's call her Michelle, right? So anyways, right, Benjamin is in class and Michelle has, he hasn't really talked to Michelle yet, but he's, you know, his friend like, you know, leans over to him and like kind of like starts talking saying, hey, do you know about this new girl? And, you know, Benjamin's like, dude, no, I have no idea. Like, I haven't talked to her yet. Like, is she chill or whatever? Like, she seems fine. And, you know, uh, you know, Benjamin's friend is like, no, dude, she's crazy, dude. Like, she lives in a different planet. And, and Benjamin is like, he always, here's the thing, dude. He always loves to give people benefit of, the, benefit of the doubt. He always, you know, and honestly, man, that's a, probably a good way to live life. Like, just assume, assuming the best in people can sometimes be pretty, you know, damaging if you do it at the wrong times. But in general, I just like to assume the best in people. And, you know, a lot of times they actually have good intentions. Um, but, you know... This was a time when Benjamin was wrong. He was very, very wrong. So Benjamin's friend goes on to tell Benjamin that, like, oh, you know, Michelle's, uh, I don't know, her dad, like, owns this really big company. He's, like, you know, really powerful, wealthy, whatever, right? They come from this crazy family, right? But, like, you know, not, not, you know, they're not billionaires. They don't, they're not actually, like, sons or daughters of presidents or anything. But, but they're doing okay. They're doing all right, to say the least. They're doing fairly fine, to, to put it lightly. They're doing, they're doing just all right. But anyways, right, Benjamin's like, dude, like, that doesn't matter. Like, I know plenty of chill people that parents are doing well. I know plenty of chill people that parents aren't doing well at all. You know, it's like, I don't think that's a deciding factor. And Benjamin's friend's like, no, dude, just trust me on this one. And Benjamin's like, no, I, I'm going to see it for myself. So Benjamin, right, you know, he goes and finds Michelle because she's new and introduces himself. He's like, hey, I'm Benjamin. So nice to meet you. And Michelle is actually incredibly nice to him. She's like, oh, hi, uh, my name is, you know, Michelle. I'm new to the school, whatever. It's so nice to meet you, Benjamin. They have a little conversation, right, about their hobbies, their interests their passions, what they want to do with their lives. You know, uh, I was actually in class today and we had like questions with like a, cause we just, I'm in a new semester anyway. So there's new people. And the questions were like, one, what is your, cause you're supposed to interview your partners, like your partner. And the first one's what is your partner's name? The second one is what is their major? The third one was what do they want to do with their life? I'm like, uh, I'm just like, dude, what? Like it just got so deep so fast. Oh my God. But anyways, right. You know, Michelle and uh, Benjamin were having a good conversation and, and Benjamin the entire time was sitting there just like, dude, my friend was so wrong. This girl's nice. She, she's genuinely interested in me, man. Like she's actually like, not like that, but like she genuinely like seemed like she was holding a conversation. She was being attentive. She seemed very nice. She was smiley. She was asking about like his interest, dude. Like she was legitimately like, you know, you know, she was, she was nice. She was friendly. He's right. So Benjamin, you know, he goes back to any of his friend. He's like, dude, I just talked to her. And his friend's like, dude, did you see what I mean? And he's like, no, dude, I don't see what you mean. She was super cool. And he's like, dude, what? And, and, and you know, Benjamin's like, yeah, I don't actually think that you hung out with her. And, you know, Benjamin's friend's like, yeah, okay, well, I didn't talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, but I just heard things. And Benjamin's like, bro, 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 bro. You're really telling me that you are so certain that something you heard from someone, from someone, from someone's dog, from someone's grandmother, from someone's aunt, from someone's Facebook messenger, from, y y you know what I mean? Like, do, do, do you really believe in that, bro? Like, rumors are so crazy. And, and to be fair, don't believe every rumor you hear. Life lesson from Connor. Second life lesson is subscribe or perish. Anyways, right. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm, I'm serious, guys. I'm serious. But anyways, right, Benjamin is like, dude, like, okay, she's cool, she's chill, trust me. And Benjamin's friend's like, all right, bro, like, fair, fair enough, you got me, whatever. So class eventually starts, and they're in a, a geography class, or some kind of history geography hybrid class, whatever, right? And the teacher's there, and she's like, hey, class, we have a new student, someone new to the grade or whatever, and uh, Michelle, would you like to introduce yourself? And, you know, Michelle gets up, she's like, hi, guys, my name's Michelle, I'm so excited to be here at the new school or whatever, right? Pretty standard stuff. But, you know, so after Michelle introduced herself, she sat down, and then class actually started. And, you know, Benjamin was pretty certain that he was 100% right on this call. But let me just say that uh, uh, Benjamin was proven wrong about her not being absolutely insane and just, like, completely entitled and, like, in a completely different world. He, he, you know, he realized he was wrong very quickly, as you guys will see. Anyways, right, so they're going on, and, you know, the teacher starts asking questions. She's like, all right, guys. She starts talking about different countries very broadly, and she's like, she asks a kind of a question about global governance. Basically, like, 
who is like running the world in a sense? They're like, is the United States as the global superpower? Do you think that they're in control? Do you think that, you know, China with their, you know, their rising, you know, economy and their ever expanding presence along, you know, the, you know, the, the choke points and the, uh, and the, and the, I, I forgot where it was. I, I took a class on this. You guys aren't here for geopolitics. You're here to see a spoiled girl get absolutely owned and I shall deliver. Don't worry, guys. Don't sweat it. Anyways, right. So then the teacher's like, all right, I'm just going to open up this discussion to the floor. So Benjamin says something. Some other kid says something. And then, you know, you know, my, uh, Michelle actually raises her hand, which, you know, I, with like the new people, right? The new, whenever you're new to the class, like it's always pretty, like, it's pretty scary, dude. Like if you know everyone in the class, you're definitely more likely, or at least in my case, I'm more likely to open up. I feel a little bit like it's fine to be vulnerable. But if you're new and this is like a first impression and you know this is a first impression, dude, I, I, I would be a little bit more reserved. But Michelle was just like straight up like, yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit. So she starts going off about something and it started to go downhill very quickly. So she starts saying things about global politics, right, and how, like, the world works. And then, like, she it just brought up, like, the name of someone. And it was very familiar because, like, you know, you know, actually, you know, Benjamin, in retrospect, at, at the moment didn't realize, you know, why she brought up this name that was a little bit suspicious. But he realized that he, like, he looked up this girl's profile before. Like, I think he followed her, her on Instagram, like, before she came. I don't know about you, but, like, we would always, like, whenever there are new kids coming to the grade, we would always follow them on Instagram before to kind of make them feel welcome and, like, you know, kind of check them out too, see who's coming, right? Well, let's be real. We weren't just doing it to make them feel welcome. We wanted to see what they looked like, bro. We were checking them out. But anyways, right... <laughs> Maybe that's just me, dude. Maybe that's just me, bro. I don't know. But anyways, right, he recognized her last... He didn't remember it at the moment, but in retrospective, she name-dropped someone in her family when she was talking about ruling the world, like, who ruled the world. And it wasn't very clear at first because it was kind of like a first and last name that no one really recognized. But Benjamin kind of remembered the last name, which happened to be her last name. And also the teacher, Benjamin noticed that the teacher made a little bit of a weird face because the teacher also knew, you know, Michelle's last name and, like, legitimately knew Michelle's last name. And when Michelle started name-dropping all these people with her last name, the teacher was like, hold up. And as this girl, right, as Michelle's going on, right, people are starting to realize that she keeps name dropping all these people that they don't recognize, but they all seem to have the same last name. And it's very, very weird. And right, Michelle isn't like acting like full of herself or anything. She's just legitimately listing like what she believes is reality of like, oh, how the world's being like run, who really runs it, who control, kind of like, you know, who's like kind of like who's the most influential like person or people or organization or country or group of countries right in the world. Right. And, you know, she's talking about this. And just, like, people are trying to realize that something is up, that something is wrong, until she goes full mask off, bro, until she goes 100% just blatantly says it, and she's like, yeah, and it's pretty cool to be a member of a family that legitimately, like, you know, owns the world. And everyone's like, did someone spike the apple juice, or did I just hear that correctly? Like, everyone was just like, uh, come again, bro, what the f- what? But anyways, right, the, the teacher's kind of just looking at her like, uh, I, I definitely didn't just, I, I didn't hear that, right? I heard that wrong. Like, no shot this girl just said that her parents, like, legitimately own and run the world. What? Speaking of world, right, speaking of world, uh, today's secret word is world. Um, so comment world down below, and I will be harding as many of those as I can. I'm going to be pretty busy tonight, so I don't know how many I'll be able to get to. So don't, don't take it personally, man. I'm doing two videos a day while at college, while trying, while doing stuff with friends. So yeah, don't take it personally. I'll do my best. I just want to say thank you for watching and just giving me watch time. It's huge, right? And uh, today, today, man, today is your lucky day. I don't know how else to put it, but today is simply your lucky day because for every single person who leaves a like on today's video, they will legitimately receive nothing. I'm not even kidding you, dude. And every single person who, while they, they go down there and they leave a like in the video, also make sure that the notifications are turned on they will receive two nothings. I'm I'm just I'm just that guy. I'm legitimately that guy, bro. I'm that I'm I'm just that guy. So anyways, right, the class is basically just thinking that she's joking at this point because no one actually believes that this girl legitimately thinks that like, you know, they, they know that like her parents or her dad or her mom or whatever, that they're in high up positions, that they have a lot of money, that like whatever, right? But they don't legitimately think that this girl is 
that deluded to think that our parents are that powerful and actually have like that much money and actually to like control the actual world to have ownership of planet earth there's like that Kanye West meme where it's like how much is the how much does the earth cost I'm gonna buy it like this girl legitimately was at a point where she believed that you know because like you know it, your parents might like if they have a lot of money or they do a lot of cool stuff right they might not they might not want to totally tell you about it and most of the time that's for the better so that you underestimate what what you know what your parents have so you don't become like lazy or spoiled or whatever but this was like the opposite effect bro like when her parents were being vague and opaque o o opaque not opaque opaque is the oil group of countries whatever right for being so vague and opaque about like what they actually have she assumed the opposite bro she assumed that they actually were so incredibly powerful that they legitimately own the world which like remember this was in like third grade or something so this isn't like some high schooler but still dude well the thing is right you know, while the class was completely silent, the class was silent, right? And the teacher was just looking at her like, uh, haha, like, that's funny, right? Everyone's, like, kind of smiling a little bit. Uh, Michelle kept going at it, like, kept talking about, like, her belief that her parents legitimately, like, ran slash owned the world or whatever. That the class started to realize that, dude, she wasn't joking. She's being 100% legit. And, <laughs> dude, everyone, instead of, like, you know, getting freaked out or anything, like, the entire class, when they started to realize, like, one kid started giggling, bro. And then, you know, it's like a laughter chain reaction. When one dude starts laughing, bro, it's the whole thing comes tumbling down. And within seconds, the whole class is laughing. Look, little rude to, like, the new girl. But, bro, she legitimately thinks that she owns planet Earth, bro. I, I feel like that's right. That's grounds alone to come in and, like, that's grounds alone. Like, and then the entire class, bro, the entire class is, like, bro, broke into laughter. They broke into laughter, bro. They just started, like, everyone, including the teacher, was just like, oh, man, what the fuck? didn't actually say that, right? This is a third grade class, dude. No swearing in my, in my third grade classroom. So this was definitely, like, a tough day for Michelle, right? This was a harsh reality check, especially, you know, you're in third grade and you're new, right? But, dude, at the end of the day, if you actually believe this, right, it's better you learn now and not later and have this mentality. It's better you're, like, you learn very harshly very early on so that you don't, like, you know, actually say something crazy like this, like, during a job interview or when you're trying to, like, impress someone or something like that. So, like, she learned her lesson pretty early on, but pretty, pretty harsh, Pretty harsh, but, uh, dude, she thought her parents legitimately, legitimately owned planet Earth. Like, come on, bro. Come on. Subscribe to the channel and now go watch another video. There's some on screen. Dude, if you don't watch another video, I'll actually Another cry. day, another story about a spoiled kid, but this time he actually attacks his teacher while, like, spewing a bunch of nonsense at... A a anyways, this is probably one of the funniest ones we've had in a second. So, yeah, sit back, relax, uh, grab something to drink, grab something to eat, grab something to mine your Bitcoin on, grab something to do your math homework on, and, uh, yeah, let's just kind of get right into the story. Uh, this one is this one's something else, dude. So anyways, the subscriber who sent in the story, and you can send in stories too to my Instagram and get featured on the channel, link in description. Um, anyways, we're going to call this guy Ben. And I know that's kind of a meme on the channel because I use Ben for like e every other name, but I was looking through the comment section for suggestions for names to use. And someone says, use Ben because haha, use Ben all the time. So I'm actually taking your suggestions for names and I'll be using Ben. <laughs> Anyways, right, so Ben, uh, he's a subscriber, he sent in the story. Anyways, he's in class, and he's in sixth grade. And in the sixth grade class, he has someone in his class, and we're going to call this guy Brandon. And uh, Brandon is the spoiled kid, right? So Brandon, like, okay, so the other spoiled kids that we've had, like, the parents have done, like, extremely well. Like, they come from a ton of money, right? Brandon, right, ca came from a pretty standard family, and look, there's... Like, that, that's, like, everyone else at his school. Like, he was legitimately, like, everyone else in his school. But for some reason, right, he just always had it in his mind that he was significantly better and had significantly more money and was just, like, super powerful and his, his family could smite you with, like, I don't know, a court case or a lawsuit if you did anything. So this kid was not just, like, you know, entitled and spoiled. He was also delusional. So that kind of just brings, like, quite quite the, like quite the like the scramble of ingredients to make uh, an interesting turn of events especially when he actually just goes ballistic and attacks his teacher but we'll get into that in a second guys give me a second let me let me draw out the backstory a little bit let me give you some background let's flavor up the story 
Anyways, right, so Brandon has been in Ben's class for a very long time, so everyone kind of knows about Brandon. And Brandon really didn't have that many friends, and, you know, sometimes it's like, aw, like, poor kid doesn't have that many friends. Nah, bro, he did this to himself. He played himself. Like, normally, you know, I'd agree I'd feel bad or whatever. No, no, no. This kid definitely did it to himself. He had been, like, known for, you know, he was kind of known as someone who had, like, an attitude with ha without really having a reason to have an attitude. And there's no real reason ever to have an attitude, but in the past, like, the spoiled kids have been, like, you know, they had been acting entitled because, like, they had always gotten something more and they knew, like, their parents made a lot of money or whatever. First of all, not a good reason to be a complete jackass, right? That's, that's not an excuse. But Brandon, dude... Uh, there was literally no reason. Like there was no there was no base that this was on. He just imagined that his parents had like infinite money glitch when that just was not the case. They were just normal, which is totally normal. It's, it's cool. Like that's that's what everyone else was. He could have been easily boys with them, but but no. Anyways, right, so one day in class, one day in class, you know, Ben and Brandon, they're both in some history class together. This is a standard sixth grade history class. I don't know what they're learning about. But one day, they're just kind of sitting there, and they're getting their test back, right? So they had a relatively big test, and, you know, Brandon, you know, obviously was bragging to everyone about how he was just, like, inherently smarter than all of them. I think this was, like, similar behavior to another girl way back in the day. I think I did a story about her, like, a long time ago. But anyways, Brandon also did the same thing, where he basically bragged to everyone about how he was gonna crush it, and how he's gonna absolutely ace this test. 100%. Like, just absolutely slam it without even having to try, dude. I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. Like, he went into class and he's like, I am just smarter. I am just better than all of you guys inherently, which is a little weird. And he's like, I don't even have to study. And obviously, right, this test was like a history test. It, was, it, was, it wasn't like an interpretive one. It was a, what date did this thing happen? What is the name of the fourth king of England? Like, it was one of those like, like, you gotta memorize stuff tests. It's not even something if you were genuinely, like, a really smart dude. You couldn't just figure it out. Like, you couldn't do the math. You couldn't figure it out, man. So, obviously, right, and, you know, the teacher is handing back all the tests. And Ben, the subscriber, bro, he studied. He got, like, an 85. He did very solid on the test. The average was probably, like, 88, 89. So, he felt very sad. He was satisfied with his result. And the teacher put every test face up on everyone's desks until she got to Brandon. And she just, like, <laughs> she put a face down. You know for a fact, right? You just know for a fact. Some teachers, they put all the tests face down, but if teachers put tests face up and then they come to you and the test is face down, dude, you're absolutely boned. It's GG, it, it's, it's just unlucky right now. GG unlucky. Like you got, uh, it's, it's just not going to work, bro. You, you're screwed. You failed. I don't know how else to say it. And uh, yeah, uh, so Brandon, you know, was still pretty confident because he's also a little bit delusional, if you couldn't already pick up on that. He, you know, he flipped over his test and Ben kind of like saw his test grade right away and he was just looking at Brandon. And Brandon had a smug expression on his face and then when he turned around the test grade, like his face dropped because he had like, I don't know, 62 or something. So right, Ben was watching Brandon as Brandon's face like kept like contorting it, like started like, it got all scrunched up, and then it was, like, all, like, and then he started to get angry, then shocked, confused. He went through, like, all five stages of grief within, like, ten seconds in his facial expressions. But then, of course, he raises his hand. He's like, teacher, teacher, there must be a mistake. And the teacher's like, Brandon, like, I'm sorry. I know this one didn't go as well as you wanted, but, like, I, there was no mistake. And he's like, no. That, that's, imp that, that's impossible. And, you know, uh, Brandon and the teacher, they start having a back and forth. Brandon's like, no, no, I'm very, very certain you made a mistake here. And the teacher's like, Brandon, all right, what do you think the mistake is? He's like, I don't know, but it's very clear. Like, obviously, right, I'm just inherently really smart, and I'm, I, I wouldn't make mistakes like this. And the teacher's like, Brandon? Brandon, come on, man. Like, I'm sorry. If you want, like, to, if you want to, like, study with me, like, if you want to, like, go over future assessments, so, you know, I, 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 I don't know, like, so the, like, I don't know, you do better, like, that's totally fine, man. And Brandon's like, no, no, I don't think you understand. I'm just inherently smart, so I should have done well. And at this point, the teacher's like, Brandon, Brandon, come on now. Like, I'm sorry you didn't do well on this. Next time, it'll go better, and I can also help you make it go better if you just want to study with me. And at this point, right, Ben, the subscriber, is sitting there like, oh, boy. Because, like, they were kind of recently new into this history class. Yes, it was a pretty major assessment, but it was just, like, a major assessment on the first kind of unit they did. So the teacher didn't really know Brandon. And all the other kids are kind of looking around like, oh, boy, Brandon's about to have another one of his meltdowns, his epic meltdowns. Except this one went a little bit farther than anyone would have expected. Uh, 
I mean, normally you don't expect a, t- a kid to, uh, you know, attack his teacher. But anyways. And then Brandon begins his breakdown, right? Brandon looks at the teacher. He's like, I- I'm going to count to five. And if you don't revert the grade, you're going to regret it. And the teacher's like, dude, what are you talking? Like, what? The teacher's like, Brent, like, Brandon. I'm not going to change the grade. And Brandon's like, four? Because he said five. He's like, five? Four? Teacher's like, dude, I don't... Teacher's like, I'm just, I'm just not going to change it. Three? And he just looks at him, and he has a stare down. Two? And Brandon's like, you're going to regret this. And the teacher's like, regret what? And then Brandon says, one. And he starts like... He like looks down and makes this really angry face. Goes... Mm. And at this point, all the other kids are like... Uh... Dude, what the fuck? Huh? Like, are you okay? <laughs> like, excuse me? Are you good? Huh? Is everything okay? Are, are, are you, like, bra- what? All the other kids are just watching in just complete astonishment at this point. Because this kid is actually just, like, melting down right in front of them. He's like, and what he does is he goes up. He, like, goes up, walks up to the teacher's desk. And at this point, the teacher was, like, stood up and was, like, passing around grades. So Brandon walks right by the teacher and goes right up to the teacher's desk. And at this point, right, you know, Brandon goes up to the desk of the teacher and is like, you've made... A mistake. You've underestimated me. And he takes both of his hands and he just like clean swipes the entire desk. So the teacher had like a bunch of papers, like a cup of coffee, like a bunch of stuff on the desk. All flies onto the floor. At this point, the teacher's just like mouth is wide open because right, and and the entire class too. The entire class, because here's the thing. They know that like Brandon has had like breakdowns and like goes on rants and rampages but dude this was a whole nother level like this kid must have seriously cracked at this point and then brandon starts to say you poor you filthy you destitute vermin and at this point like the teacher's like what huh he's like you scum you slime you are beneath me and he goes around just like rip like he picks up some chair and he throws it across the room barely right and he's like uh secret word of the day is chair speaking of chairs right so comment chair down below i'll try and heart as many of those as i can and also uh today's your lucky day because if you leave a like on the video right now you'll receive literally nothing anyways right brandon he's picking up a chair throws it across the room is like and the teacher's just like dude what the f-? at this point right the teacher's like kind of like assessing the situation because he's still kind of like shocked by just what is going on he's just like oh my god like are are you serious and then brandon goes over to the whiteboard right there's a whiteboard there's whiteboard markers and there's erasers he picks up a big jar of whiteboard markers and he's like you shall feel my wrath he starts just chucking them at the teacher the teacher's like starts to like dodge he's like oh stop it stop it brandon and brandon like takes the whiteboard markers and throws them and the whiteboard markers are like foam they're like styrofoam dude so they like daintily float over like float over and like bounce off the teacher and the teacher's like that's it the teacher goes up to brandon who's just kind of like shocked at this point so the teacher basically runs up on him grabs him by the collar and says you're coming with me and just like pulls him out of the class at this point ben and all the other classmates are just sitting in class, watching as the teacher drags him out. And, and Brandon's like, you'll regret this. You'll pay. You filthy poor slime. And he's just <laughs> like the most goofiest stuff anyone has ever heard. And once they leave, after like 10 seconds of pure silence, Ben just starts laughing, dude. Because at this point, right, Ben has just watched this thing. And just like, what just happened? And the whole class is like talking, laughing a little bit, just like completely shell shocked at like, because they always knew Brandon was kind of like a weird kid and like would always be like, was kind of like weirdly entitled and delusional, but he'd never had like a crazy meltdown like this, right? This this is at a whole new level. And so anyways, right, Brandon, you know, apparently he gets like about a week of, a week of uh, you know, suspension in school. And, uh, yeah, the teacher comes back after dropping at the principal's office and explaining what happened. And the teacher's like, just, he looks at, clo- at the clock. He's like, there's 10 minutes left. He's like, you know what? Uh, I did have a lesson plan for today, but I think the lesson that, you know, <laughs> we all learned today was this, don't be that guy. And then everyone starts laughing, bro. They're all like, okay. And the teacher's like, all right, this is a weird day. Just get out of here. Like, have a good day. I don't know. Like, I, I need to think about this. And the teacher's just like, yeah, class is done. You guys are good. And everyone's just like, okay. And they're just all leaving class like, oh my God, like, what just happened? Anyways, a week later, uh, Brandon is not just, uh, 
he, he isn't just suspended, he's also removed from the class. But, like, a couple of weeks later, Ben, like, walk, bumps into Brandon, and it's like, hey, what's up? And Brandon looks at him and just, like, keeps walking, dude. And that's, like, the last time Ben ever saw Brandon. I don't know if he transferred schools or he just, like, wasn't, like, in class with him anymore. But, yeah, interesting, right? Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go click in another video. There's some on screen, some on the sidebar. Click it. Click it or I'll cry. Oh Today we have a story of probably one of the most spoiled kids on planet Earth that actually attacks his teacher after not getting what he wants. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. So yeah, sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Today's subscriber story, which if you want to send in a story, you can do so to either my Instagram or the Discord server. Both are in the description of this video. We're going to call the subscriber Tony. Uh, and by the way, all the names of this video were taken from the comment section, so if you have a name you want me to use, either someone you like, someone you don't like, your friend, your mom, your cat, doesn't matter, leave the comment down below of the name you want me to use. Anyways, so Tony's the subscriber, and you know, he's in school. And he's in uh, sixth grade at this point, so he's old enough that, like, you know, the kids are responsible for their own actions, but also, like, young enough, he's still in sixth grade. It's kind of that in-between period. There is a new kid. This was about a week into sixth grade, so it's still very early on into the school year. But there's a kid who just moved into the neighborhood, and after about a week in, he, like, joined the class. So he didn't join them right away, but he joined them a week after they started. We're gonna call this kid Joey, right? And uh, no one really knew anything about Joey, and, you know, when he came in, you know, he walked in. He, he walked in pretty confidently, especially for a new kid entering, you know, sixth grade or whatever. He walked in fairly confidently, and the teacher was like, Hello, class. Like, I know that we're all kind of new here, but Joey and his parents just moved here, and they signed up to the school system. So, yeah, you know, welcome, everyone. Welcome, Joey. He's new to the class. He'll be, you know, joining us. And, uh, yeah, so say hi, guys. So everyone in the class, including Tony, was like, Hi, Joey. And the teacher's like, all right, Joey, if you want to, like, give us a little rundown of, you know, who you are, all that kind of good stuff. And Joey's like, hi, my name is Joey. I'm new to the neighborhood, and my dad is a managing partner at Goldman Sachs. If you guys don't know, Goldman Sachs is a pretty big investment bank. And if you're a managing partner, you make a lot of money per year. And it was just kind of weird because, like, the teacher kind of gave him this look, kind of gave, you know, Joey this look of, like, uh, bro... Uh, your name, your age, where you live, your hobbies maybe, that's cool enough for like an introduction video, but I don't totally understand why you gave your dad's work position, but whatever. A uh, teacher didn't say that, but the look kind of implied this. And everyone was kind of like, okay. And at this point, right, I think Joey expected everyone to be like, oh my god, the, you know, MD at Goldman Sachs, that's crazy. But look, all these kids, bro, they were playing Roblox and Legos. They had no idea even what a Goldman or a Sachs was at this point. Uh, but the place that Joey came from, everyone was like, oh my god, you're, you know, you're an MD at Goldman? Oh my god, you're, you're a private investment at, or a, a private wealth management at JP Morgan? Oh my god. But look, these kids are just like, bro, what does any of this mean? So, you know, this kind of went under the radar of most of the people there, except the teacher who did know a thing or two when it came to that. Uh, but, you know, Joey sat down and, you know, they started class. And Joey was kind of just like, you know, he wasn't paying attention. He was very obviously on his phone. And the teacher was like, wasn't going to say anything to him during class. Like, normally the teacher would be like, hey, get off your phone. I think the teacher's plan would be to, like, pull him aside after class be like, hey, like, I know you're new here, but we'd appreciate it if you weren't on your phone. The teacher didn't want to embarrass him in front of everyone. But it's pretty apparent that, like, Joey just was not paying attention and simply didn't care. Which, dude, even if you don't care and even if you don't want to pay attention, on the first first day of class, bro, you gotta at least, you gotta at least put a little of attention in, you gotta at least try, you gotta try a little bit, at least pretend to care, at least on the first day, that's just what I'm saying. But anyways, right, uh, you know, Tony was in class, just kind of like not really paying attention, but he was like looking at Joey, the new kid, um, kind of just like, oh, okay, new kid, whatever. He didn't know anything about the Goldman Sachs comment. He didn't really care that the kid was on his phone because like Tony, like to be honest, Tony, the subscriber, he wasn't always paying a ton of attention either. But like anyways, there was kind of like a break period where the kids would kind of talk to each other because they all had like, they had a class coming up, but it was in the same room. It was almost like they all had the same class in homeroom. There wasn't a lot of going in between buildings since they were just in sixth grade. Most of their classes were in the same place. But anyways, there was like a 10 minute break where they could kind of just go around and talk to each other. And during this 10 minute break, the kids did make an effort to go up to Tony and like, or not Tony, I'd go up to Joni. Uh, guys, 
I need help. Kids made an effort to go up to Joey, including Tony the subscriber. There we go. They made an effort to go up to Joey to like actually talk to him because you know they 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 were assuming it was pretty hard. Like he was new. Maybe he was acting confident just because you know that was like a front he wanted to put on. So they all went up to, or not all of them, but a decent number of them, including Tony. That's how he knows all this information for the story. Went up to Joey. They're just like, hey man, what's up? And Joey was like, what's up, guys? You know, how's it going? Not really showing a lot of interest at all. Like, maybe that was, they just kind of, like, chalked it up to that being his tone of voice. Like, oh, whatever. Like, like me, sometimes, like, whenever I'm in a social situation, sometimes I don't show a ton of energy. But, bro, I'm just tired, bro. Or maybe I'm just, like, zoned out. Like, don't take that personally. I am pro I probably do like you. Like, sometimes I come off, like, that I don't like you. And, like, I'm working on that because I just don't want that to be a thing. People, like, new people get to know me and they're like, oh, this kid doesn't like me but so they're kind of thinking like oh maybe it was just i don't know maybe joey just doesn't have a lot of energy today or this is just who he is but they all went around and joey's like all right guys what are your names and he kind of like points around at people kind of like sitting back with his like feet kicked up kind of like he's in charge so the people were taken a little bit back by how like straight up he was but they were like okay whatever so people are like hi my name's sarah hi my name's alex whatever and then of course the subscribers like hey my name's tony and then, you know, and then Joey's like, all right, you know, where do you guys live? And they're like, oh, we all live around here. And he's like, okay, that's cool. What do your parents do? And everyone was kind of like taken a little bit aback by that question, but they didn't realize like how somewhat rude and invasive that question was like, or at least the way that he was framing it. Cause Joey wasn't genuinely interested. He just wanted to know if like any of their parents made a job that sounded like they made money. So everyone went around saying their jobs and like, Joey just had this look of, like, no interest or even a little bit of disgust or something when they said their jobs, which, uh, that's pretty rude, but they didn't totally pick up on it. They just thought he was just disinterested in general. And then Joey's like, all right, whatever. But there was, like, a girl, and we're gonna call her, we're gonna call her Kate, right? So Kate was sitting with, like, her two other friends, and they were not, you know, talking with Joey, because, I don't know, they just didn't feel like getting up. They just felt, like, kind of chilling there. And Joey pointed at Kate and was like, who's that? And they're like, oh, that's Kate. And Joey immediately says, she's single? And they're all like, uh, I think? Bro, they're in sixth grade. Like, fifth, like, they were like, oh my god, guys, is holding hands fourth base? Is that what that is? Like, that's the point that they were at. So they're like, yeah, I mean, everyone here is single, I guess. And Joey was just like, bet, and gets up and walks away from everyone. And Tony kind of just looks around like, dude, what? Did he just leave? And Joey went over and he sat right next to Kate and was like, hey, my name's Joey. And Kate was like, oh, hi there. Like, my name's Kate. And Joey's like, yeah. So, how's it going? And Kate's like, good. Joey's like, all right. That's nice. Nice. You love to hear that. Yeah, you love to hear that. And, uh, you know, at this point, Tony was just like looking at them like, what is this kid doing, right? And uh, Joey's just trying to talk her up, which like, you know what? Hey, he's got confidence. He's got initiative. Uh kind of respect for that, but also no respect for everything else he's done so far. But this is where things start to get pretty juicy. And I'm going to say the word of the day so I don't interrupt the flow when things get juicy. Comment spoiled if you made it this far. Uh, I usually filter the comments by the keyword and then try and heart as many of those as I possibly can. So comment spoiled if you want a decent chance of getting a heart. No guarantees. I got a lot of things going on. And while you're down there, if you leave a like on today's video, you will literally receive nothing in return, which is a fantastic deal if I do say so myself. Anyways, right, so Joey is, you know, talking Kate up. Like, Joey's talking to Kate a lot, really trying to make some progress, probably trying to slide in or something. But anyways, right, the 10 minutes are up, and the teacher's like, all right, class, it's time for us to start, you know, we're gonna start, like, history reading, please get out your textbook, go to page, like, I don't know, 68? Ha, huh, you thought you were gonna get the funny number, psych. And Joey, like, looks up and says, hey, can I have five minutes? And the teacher's, like, taken aback, because, like, some kid legitimately just asked him, hey, I'm still doing something. Can I have five, can you start class five minutes later? And the teacher's like, uh, Joey, like, we start class pretty promptly. I can't just give you five minutes. And Joey's like, what do you mean you just can't give me five? It's just five minutes, man, like, I'm having a good conversation with Kate over here. And Kate's just looking at him like, I want nothing to do with this. So the teacher's kind of just looking at Joey like, what is this kid on? Yeah, Joey's just like, oh, man, it's just five minutes. Like, is it really that big of a deal? And the teacher's like, Joey, we're starting class. And Joey's like, what do you mean we're starting class? I just need five minutes. And at this point, Kate is just like, 
do not involve me, bro. Do not involve me. Like, I'm just not trying to get involved in this. At this point, Joey's like, what do you mean? And the teacher's like, Joey, we're starting. All right, class, turn your pages. And then all of a sudden, right, the class gasps because Joey has like in his hand, right? You know, he was just holding on to a pencil, right? He takes the pencil and a full force chucks it at the teacher. He's like, come on, man. Why do you have to be such a buzzkill? And the teacher's like, Joey, did you just throw that pencil at me? Joey's like, of course I just threw that pencil at you. And the teacher's like, Joey, that's a very serious offense. You can't throw stuff at me. And Joey then takes his whole textbook. Remember, this is not some little flimsy paperback textbook. This is a thick, hardcover history textbook. And chucks it at the teacher and says, all I wanted was five minutes, man. And the teacher says, Joey, I know you're new here, but it's very clear you can't throw stuff. Because, like, he just, he chucked this heavy textbook. The teacher barely dodged it. And the teacher's like, Joey, I need you to go to the principal's office this second. And Joey's like, or what? No one knew this at the time, but in retrospect, it was pretty clear. So the teacher actually took out his phone and sent a text to the principal saying, come down here, a student is not cooperating. Also bring like the guards or the school police or whatever. And, you know, Joey's like, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Give me the five minutes. Like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And the teacher's like, Joey... You threw a pencil at me and then threw a heavy textbook at me, which if it hit me in the wrong angle, could have actually hurt me pretty seriously. Like, this is a very serious offense. Joey's like, come on, man. It's honestly not that big of a deal. Give me those five minutes. And everyone is just standing there just like, oh, my God, this kid is a menace. Like, they knew this kid was, like, a little strange beforehand, but this kid is an outright menace at this point. So at this point, right, Joey and the teacher are having a standoff where the teacher is saying... I need you to go to the principal's office. You can't be in this room. And Joey's just looking at him like, what? What are you going to do, buddy? What are you going to do? And at this point, right, they're both just sitting there to the classroom opens. And the principal walks in and two big old security guards walk in. And Joey looks at them and kind of laughs a little bit. And he says, if you think you're you're dragging me out of here, you're going to have a massive lawsuit on your hands. Do you know who my dad is? He can pay the best lawyer, and they'll come for you. And they won't just come for the school. They'll come for you personally. At this point, right, the principal was like, nah, this kid is out of here. So he says, yo, guards, get this kid out of here. So the two guards walk over. Joey's like, you can't do anything to me. And at this point, Joey starts, like, punching at the security guards. And the two security guards firmly grab on to, like, you know, the scruff of his, like, clothes. He's like, hey. Don't rip that. These clothes are expensive. And they drag cl- and they drag Joey out of the room. And at this point, the teacher's just sitting there. His, like, mouth is wide open. Tony and all the other kids are sitting there in shock as well. And the principal, after, you know, Joey is dragged out of the room, just goes and he says, Hi, guys. Sorry for any inconvenience. Please continue on with the class. And they leave. At this point, the teacher's just sitting there like, What is my life, bro? <laughs> and the entire class is just has lost for words. So the teacher ends up talking to them for a second about like how some kids are just like on a completely different planet and how he's like grateful that he has the class that he has. Like the teacher literally goes on to say like I appreciate that you guys are so level headed and like that just gives me more perspective. And the teacher says you know what I'm just going to give you guys the rest of the class for the free period. We'll I'll figure out a way for us to catch up on this later. I just got to sit here and process what just happened. And so the whole class like erupts into like talking with each other. And I'll just skip to like the next day because like did Joey actually sue? Well, the school actually did like receive a letter from like the lawyers or whatever, but it was pretty clear that because the school had a lawyer come in and read it. And the school's lawyer said, hey, this is pretty clear that this is just kind of like scare bait and nothing more. Like nothing is actually going to come of this. Like this is very much just like a a lot of pomp and no actual like nothing. So you guys are fine. The teacher was fine. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some of the recommended. If you watch one, I'll be very happy. Bye.